That's part of one of my questions. Oh, okay. Hey, what's going on? What's going on, everybody? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Hey, welcome to Off the Record. Look, we, we have got a, a great, great show for y'all tonight. We got Big Rob, the one and only Big Rob. I see him in the waiting room. Can you hear me back there, Big Rob? Give me a thumbs up if you hear me. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we got him waiting on here. Uh, you know, y'all know who Big Rob is. Big Rob is that's the man right there. That's the man with the plan. And uh, we're gonna bring him on here, and he's gonna drop some knowledge, some nuggets on him, and we're gonna we're gonna pick his brain because a lot of stuff that that I want to know. Uh, that's why I brought him on here because, like I say, he's been in the music business for a very long time, forty plus years. So he's on oh, here. Wow. What you gotta say, Mister Live, before we bring Big Rob on here? Hey, I'm just I'm just happy to have Big Rob on here tonight, man. Mm -hmm. Another exclusive interview. Well, no, you know. Just him giving his story and letting us know what's up, man. I wanna, I'm ready to get this started. Oh yeah, what we do here on, on uh, off the record, certain artists uh, that's been in the business for a long time, uh, you know, they deserve to be exclusive. You know, he's definitely an exclusive guy. He's been around for a long time, and uh, and he loves the music. So, without uh, further detail, we got 15 people on. They chime in. We're gonna, we're gonna go and bring on uh, Big Rob on here. Hey, what's going on, Big Rob? Hell, the people, bro. <laughs> he said, "Power yeah. to the people." <laughs> Power to the people, brothers. Hell no, man. Power to the people, brothers. What's happening? You did not come on here like that, brother. What's happening, brother? You say you want to talk to a legend? Power to the people's brother. That's right, right, man. Right. Yeah. You, you, and, we, we, we doing the show to entertain people, and make people feel the good today, ain't we, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, That's sir. Right. Mr. Live, God bless you. What's happening, brothers? Let's How you doing, brothers. man? Big Rob. <laughs> it's a pleasure for you to be on the show tonight, man, because I know you got a lot of knowledge. Oh Not yeah, to tell the people, yeah. man. So let's get this thing started, man. Uh huh. Hey, how's the world out there in Cincinnati, man? Oh man, it's beautiful. We had a little bit of rain earlier today, but you uh -huh. know, soul power, brother. Everything is good. You see, I got on my <laughs> African attire. I'm ready to do this, man. I'm glad that to have say you, soul brother. Power. Tonight. I see. Hey, I see. Now, hey, hey, hey it, brother, they, they say they say I was old school, brother. So I just wanted to know that I'm old school, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, ain't nothing wrong with get old because some people don't get old, big rock. Some people don't even get old. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, brother. So, so yeah. no, man, y'all, y'all good, man. I just came no. here to have some fun. Hopefully, you we go. can fill the room up and make some people feel good, man. I'm still there trying to get my cam, trying to get my camera angles together because I want everybody to see. There was, I yeah. want you to see my good outfit. You understand what I'm saying? I, I went over to the Arab store today and got this specific. You know, you, you know keep I mean? you keep it fly. You keep it fly now. Hey man, they 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 they, they said they said I'm a uh, what they call the young guys call me they call me the OG they say I'm a say I'm a legend out here so you know uh, what I mean so hey I couldn't come okay. on I couldn't come on here dressed like I wasn't a legend brother what's happening right that's right, that's right. hey we're we'll gonna get started though Big Rock but uh, oh, yeah. when we get yeah, yeah yeah let's let's ask you uh I want you to just introduce yourself um just tell us just a little bit about yourself just a little bit of background about yourself uh. Well, all jokes aside, man. Mm -hmm. Hold on, brother. Let me uh, let me let, 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 let me go on. Let, let, let me let, let 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 the real guy go on and show up, man. I, <laughs> I, I, I want I want I, I want I want to make y'all laugh a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. Yeah. And then, and then hold, hold hold on one second, okay, y'all. Yeah. yeah, you good? You good? You know, I, I want I want I want I want to make you laugh a little bit and, and mm -hmm. have, have a little fun. Uh huh. So, with that being said. I figured that, that that'll help that'll help get our views up, and then we can oh, yeah. and yeah, and then and then 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 talk talk a little bit. You dig what I'm saying? There okay. we go. There it is. Ah, uh, there you go. There you um, go. There you go. What's happening? <laughs> okay. Yeah. That goes to Rob. I know. 
Oh, that, oh, that, oh, oh, you didn't know the other guy, man? Oh, brother. Yeah, I know the other guy. I know the other I know this ride right here. Hey, man, that, 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 that's because you're too young to know about all of that. You know what I mean? Uh, man, let me yeah. get this thing situated. What was yeah. your first question, Mr. Young? Yeah, yes. Tell us a little bit about yourself and give us a little bit of background. Uh, well, of course, it's spelled B I G G R O B B, Big Rob. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I started out as a kid doing this. It's like, you know, I used to think that I chose music, but now I found out that music chose me. You did? Come on, we. So, uh, so it's just a blessing to be here, man. I started out as a DJ. Uh, that moved into being a road crew guy, setting up equipment, setting up the microphones, the lights, carrying the stands, getting guitars thrown at me. My big cousin was mm -hmm. a guitar player and still is a guitar player. And uh, I used to pile around with him and sneak in the club when I was a little bitty kid, 13, 14 years old. And the club owners would say, just don't go near my bar. Whatever mm -hmm. you do, don't, because if you go near the bar, you're going to get us all shut down. <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, that by the time I was 16, I figured I knew everything that was I needed to know about. And I didn't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? And so, but uh, but I thought I did and just been out here doing it, man. And I've been blessed to meet a lot of wonderful guys and work with some of the mm -hmm. premier entertainers and be tutored and mentored by some of the most baddest guys who ever played music and walked the planet. Guys like Roger Troutman, Boosie mm -hmm. Collins, Charlotte Murdoch, right. Charlie Wilson, mm -hmm. Curtis Blow, the Bar Cage, Denise LaSalle. So, you know, mm -hmm. my list goes on and on and on. Oh, yeah. Man. You know? Yeah. You and, have and, a, and, 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 I, and I got the platinum plaques to hang on the wall, the real ones that get certified. And I also got uh -huh. the, uh, I got the scars all of them down my arms and my legs from getting beat by this business for 40 years, too. Oh, okay. That's what I'm talking about. But you notably is known for being with the band Zap. And I remember you guys came over to, to Europe in 1990 before yes, the sir. wall came down. Before the wall came down. So so tell us, yeah. so tell us how did you how did you meet Mr. Mr. Roger Trapman and become a part of his uh, the greatest funkadelic band there is known today? Well, I, I met Roger from being a disc jockey in my hometown, Cincinnati, Ohio. They used to make records at a recording studio down there. Mm -hmm. And actually, who introduced me to those guys and allowed me to first go to the studio was a guy named Reggie Calloway. His band is called Midnight Star. Okay. And, and Calloway, so, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so Midnight Star, they're from my hometown. And uh, so they all would, all these guys would make records at the same studio because back then, you know, just as people, just as black folks and talented folks, we always been we always come up with great songs, and we always mm -hmm. got the talent, but we never have the studios. We don't never, you know, we always got to go see somebody to mm -hmm. go record in their spot. And so all these guys would, you know, they was making all these great songs. They didn't have their own recording studios at the time, so mm -hmm. I would hang out at the recording studio. Once I found out that's where I could meet all these guys at, I would hang around there, man. And they would send me to the store. That's you know, I came to meet Roger, and God blessed me to know him. Yeah. And, put, and so my develop, I started out a friendship with him as a kid. And then once I got old enough to go on the road, then he mm -hmm. deputized me and took me on the road and taught me, you know, taught me the difference between, you know, good and bad and right and wrong mm -hmm. and how to entertain and what to do and what not to do. And mm -hmm. let me say this, for yeah. the first six or seven years I was on the road with Raj, uh, well, not probably for the first five years, I just was his guitar tech. And the guy mm -hmm. that set up his voice box and there were all his equipment. I wasn't trying to be an entertainer. Yeah. And then he got it in his mind that it was time for me to go from being on the sidelines to being in the show. Mm -hmm. And the reason why he told me that he wanted me to do that was because um, he said, because I was a very loyal guy and I was a hardworking guy. He said mm -hmm. as much talent as he had, he could teach anybody to be an entertainer, but he couldn't find somebody mm -hmm. who would come to work every day. Oh, so, okay. You know what I mean? So so that's what it is. And so he, hey man, they start putting microphones in my hands. So I went from setting up the microphones to actually holding one in my hand. And when I went out there, brothers, let me tell you right now, I was absolutely positively no good. <laughs> I went out there and knocked down. Hey bro, I went out there and knocked, I went down and knocked down every microphone and stumbled across the stage. And I was like, yes. <laughs> What you say yes so i said see now y'all see i can't do this so you ain't gonna send me back out there no more good right. <laughs> yeah, man. i'm like y'all play the instruments and y'all let me hand y'all the instruments i set them up y'all play them uh -huh. and, and roger looked and said nah 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 you ain't gonna get out that easy young blood uh -huh. you're going back out there again tomorrow night and i said huh he, i said wow. but you see what i did i knocked down all the mics he said well there'd be some more out there tomorrow you go out there and knock them down too yeah <laughs> he, 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 he said he said i bet you what he said i bet your arm will get hurt as he said he said i bet you hurt your arm 
from knocking mm -hmm. him down before you hurt that mic stand. You'll get tired of running to him. You'll figure it out mm -hmm. after a while. Wow. And he stuck in there with me, man, and stuck in there with me, and stuck in there with me, man, probably for about six months. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, one night we came up with this skit uh, where I really was mad and upset, and I was upset with him and upset with the band because we was out there on the, uh, we was out there playing, and one of them, you know, Darm starter geese in a bomb hole to one of them places in Germany. Uh -huh. And it, I was sick of being on the road and all that. Just, you know, just having a bad day. And uh, I went out there that night and decided I was going to strip down and come on stage with nothing on but whoa, whoa. underwear. Bang up. Stop the breath. <laughs> and, 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 and when I did that, the drummer dropped the sticks. Everybody went crazy. The place went upside down. Uh, and man, that was probably 1991 and until I left the band in 2010. I had to do that same skit every night. Wow. Yeah. No, no, ma no matter no. where I went, you know what I mean? And, 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 and everybody <laughs> went crazy. Uh, I just remember I, I, it, it was insane. And I really went out there because I was pissed off. I was like, yeah, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show mm -hmm. you about sending me out here. Yeah, da, 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 right? And man, So, Big was, Rob, you drop your draws. <laughs> A <laughs> well, live. The, the, the beautiful thing about the best looking fat man in show business is that yes, I'm oh, no, 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 no. you got a bag. You got a bag of this is your top, man. Okay. Okay, you got to bag some of this stuff up though. Okay. You dropped your draws. Now you saying you the baddest. What you say it again? Brother, slow down and slow down. And listen, that's why God gave you two ears. Two ears. You are you are right now. You are right now in the presence of the best looking fat man in show business. Before me, that <laughs> you are bad, man. No you are bad. Look, 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 look at this boy. You see, you, 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 you see how I flipped up. Who else gonna do that? Who else gonna come in? And Versace? Boy, you, you understand what I'm saying? That's Versace. Well, you I know in the hood, y'all call that Versace. Uh, this is yeah. Versace. What you, you definitely don't like you don't like showmanship. I tell you that you all. Every time I see you, be sharp. <laughs> well, hey, well, well, the best, the best, the best, the best looking fat man in show business. And so, yeah, brother, I, I went out there and, and did that little skit, and that skit uh -huh. blew up. And then, as it blew up, I started having a lot of fun with it. And yeah, you know, yeah. man, you know, and Raj wouldn't let me quit. And then, even after we lost him in 1999, right. we continued on the Zap Band. We were blessed to be able to have God gave us the strength, and the fans prayed for us because mm -hmm. we thought it was all over with. And so, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. And God bless us to continue to go on. And although I'm no longer in the band. The group mm -hmm. Zap is still alive, it's still well, it's still one of the greatest shows you could ever attend in your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would suggest that any and everybody go and always support that because it was, it, man, you know what I mean? That thing changed my life, man. Right. And, mm -hmm. You know, that's that's what took me out the projects. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay, that's a good deal. That's now good. you from, now, now, now look, up, uh, uh, Big Rob, you from Cincinnati. Yes, now you got a lot, it's a lot, a lot of musicians come out of there. Could you name a few? Because I know Cincinnati is known for a whole bunch of musicians. Yeah, we're, 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 we're from Cincinnati, Ohio. We got Boosie Collins. We got mm -hmm. Midnight Star. We got the Izzy Brothers. The band called The Deal. It's two most famous members, a guy by the name of Antonio L.A. Reed and yep. Kenneth Babyface Edmonds. Right. Uh, wow. Randy Crawford, who sang the song Street Life with the Crusaders. Uh, my man Rocky Carroll, the guy who's a wonderful actor right now, who uh, plays uh, played Joy on Rock years ago. Yeah, and now yeah. he's on CSI and all that. He's from Cincinnati. Just a, wow. just a lot of lot of fantastic people, man. And then Dayton, mm -hmm. Ohio, um, which is only 45, 50 minutes away, if that. Between those two cities and Dayton, Ohio, is um, Heat Wave, Slave, Oh Wow, the Ohio Players, Sun, uh, man. Lakeside, wow. Steve what, Arrington, you know, mm -hmm. man. So, so many, so many phenomenal groups, man. So many from just like in this, in this 60 or 75 mile, five mile radius. And the reason I personally believe is that you get so much of that funk and so much of that great stuff is because right. James Brown, yeah, the Godfather of Soul, he was signed to a record company called King Records, and King Records mm -hmm. was based in Cincinnati. So I personally right. believe that, like all the OGs and the guys who I grew up looking up to. I, you know, they were drawn to probably, you know, want to be around James Brown and that whole King Records thing and just the atmosphere. You know? So wow. my, I want to ask a question. So that's, that, that, that kind of segue into one of my questions. Like I say, I see, I see your style on stage and I see the lights and I see you, you know what I'm saying? I just, that was, I see George Clinton being a big influence too. You know what I'm saying? Was you know what that mean, What that mean? Everybody funk it and don't know how. 
You should have seen the bull when he funked the cow. Funk yeah. so hard, saw some smoke. Let's get in the bed and funk like folks. Come on. <laughs> Make my funk a pee funk, baby. Yeah. Mm. See, wow. George, you know, George, George Clinton, Bootsy Collins, who's one of my mentors and one of my biggest teachers, uh -huh. partnered up with George Clinton early on in the early 70s, right? Mm -hmm. After he was with James Brown. And then they created that whole... He, you know, he's one of the creators of that whole Parliament Funkadelic thing, you know. Parliament and so, so growing up in that atmosphere, George Clinton certainly, most definitely, is one of my heroes and okay. one of the guys who I look up to and still look yeah. up to. I um, see that in your show. I kind of see yeah, that in your yeah. show when I watch your show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, thank you, man. Yeah, I mean, you know that that you know, I mean, like I said, those guys are phenomenal, man. I mean, you know, it's, it's so been so many phenomenal entertainers, and like I said, to be able to play with and be around all those guys you know I, I was blessed that the guys who who were my mentors and my teachers were not just right. ordinary guys like i didn't just you know i didn't just hang out with a guy who played bass on the corner i got right. to hang out with boosie i didn't i didn't i wasn't raised just by a guy who played drums i was raised by tiger martin or frank cash Waddy, and those are the guys who you hear when you hear sex machine or mm -hmm. lick and stick those guys are the guys who played on those records right wow so you, you dig what I'm saying? Sugarfoot from the Ohio Players. He, without Sugarfoot, he's the guy who invented the all, oh, all oh, girl, six foot, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. Because of his influence, you get Lionel Richie, you get the Bar K's, you get Larry Dodson in the Bar K's, you get Larry Blackman from Cameo, you get wow. people from Confunction. All those guys are like disciples of that one guy, Sugarfoot. Wow. Who happened to be one of my biggest mentors and one of my best friends and once i started doing southern soul he was the guy mm -hmm. in his older days who came by my house and i had a song called keep on swinging you know mm -hmm. this one here is for my folk in the south especially them ladies when they're going in your mouth mm -hmm. keep on swinging right and i was saying oh man i don't like this song and sugar was like man that's a hit record and mm -hmm. i'm like you think it is og he said absolutely i said well if yeah. you think it's a hit record i know you know more than i know i believe you and he was right Mm -hmm. You know, so so I've been blessed, man, to be around a lot of phenomenal guys and in the soul blues game. Oh, my yeah. goodness, man. Oh, yeah. You know, but see, but see now you but then you made your transition over to Southern Soul. Uh, yeah. Talk about talk about male waiters. Uh, was he influential in you coming over to Southern Soul? <laughs> man, male, male waiters is the reason why I came to Southern Soul and why I'm still in it today. Male okay. waiters is the guy who I met on the side of the stage in Greenwood, Mississippi. Uh, he was opening up. He was doing the show. We were all doing the show mm -hmm. down there. So, because you know, mm -hmm. when we started rebuilding Zap and started going back out on the road, you know, a lot of promoters didn't believe that we could go rock and do anything without Roger. When that's rightfully so, because I mean, you know, that's like you know, I mean, Roger was the epicenter of it, right? So yeah. we, you know, we just trying to take whatever gigs we could take, and you know, the boss man at the time, which is Roger's brother Lester, he just trying to keep the band working and to make sure his guys don't starve to death. Cause mm -hmm. we were starving to death. So we ended up doing blue show. We had always done it with Roger, but we started doing more shows like that in the South. And man, when you go to a zap show, we go out there and we rock, we put that work in. And mm -hmm. I remember standing in dress, sitting in the dress room, bro. And, um, saying, man, who is that out there? Got them screaming like that. <laughs> like mm -hmm. they got them screaming. Like we had them screaming. Who is that? And somebody mm -hmm. said, well, that's male waiters. You know, that's the guy made, Got my money, got my whiskey. I was like, oh, really? It's like, yeah, he got a new record out, Hole in the Wall, just coming out. I'm like, oh. So when I mm -hmm. went, I went and shook his hand afterwards. And if anybody ever met Mel Waiters, he was one of the most nicest, loving guys in the world. Yeah, you know I heard. Saying? I went and shook his hand. And when I went to go shake his hand, he was like, uh-huh, big baby. I know exactly who you are. You Rogers, man. You such and such. You big man Rob. You. He knew my whole, who I was, what I mm -hmm. done, what I tried to do. That's the kind of guy he was. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so I said, well, man, you, you know, we could get together and collaborate. He said, sure. And so he took his money and his reputation and he bet on me and had them bring me to Malico Records in the early 2000s. And I did the Hole in the Wall remix. And that was a life changing thing for me. So that mm -hmm. uh, brought me over into this world. And so, Kevin, I know me and you talked a lot off the record when we yeah. was talking. And you said, well, man, uh -huh. I want this to be informative. So I'm going to share some things. And I never probably said publicly. Like yeah. When yeah. I went to go make the record hole in the wall with Mel Waiters, I asked the record company for a certain amount of money. Okay. And they yeah. did not, they didn't want to give me that amount of money that I asked for. So I told, well, then I'm not going to make the record. Mm -hmm. And the guy who runs it, who's a good friend of mine, is like a big brother to me, Tommy Jr., Tommy Couch Jr. We come on to become family and friends now. He was like, okay, well, 
who cares? You know, we're, we, you know, if you don't want to make the record, dude, who cares? We get somebody else. Don't matter to me. Right. That was right. kind of like the attitude. And I was, and I was like in a stalemate there. Yeah, who cares? Go get somebody else to make the record. And Mel Waiter said, little brother, would you listen to me for a second? He said, would you calm down? And I said, sure. He said, calm down, man. He said, if all you can see is getting money or only reason why you're making this record is because you want to get rich or something like that, then maybe you shouldn't do it. He said, but man, if you could just look past what you see in front of you right now and just maybe yeah. dream that maybe in the future something bigger could happen for me and you and for all of us, would you just consider that before you just absolutely positively say no? I said, sure, man. Went mm -hmm. and made the record. If I would not have went and made the record, I didn't get the money that I wanted. But if I had went and made the record, would not have went and made the record, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to y'all right now. So nah. that's the message. You know what I mean? Kev, you said, man, you got a lot of haters. That's because they don't want me to tell. They don't want me, they don't want me to do my work that God called me to do, which is just inspire people. Mm -hmm. So I know it's somebody out there right now, live, you know what I mean? You might be, you know, if you if you making records live and you go to the studio and the beat man won't. A hundred dollars, and all you got is fifty dollars. Mm. Yeah, but you know that beat is hot, right? Right, you know that beat is hot. You know right. that that thing can help change your life, right? Right. You say, here you go, brother. Take this fifty, and let, can I, can, you know, can I give you five dollars a week on? Can I put the rest of it in layaway? Right. Or you could just not do it, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or you could just not do it. So I know that 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 should hopefully inspire somebody out there, man, because it's a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. Like you sit here and see me. You with these gonna have to. And all this talking, don't get it twisted. Like I said, we got the I got the battle scars for you, brother. I, yeah. you know I mean, like we we slept. I didn't slept on people. This is after I didn't been on HBO, Soul Train, then all these beautiful things. God blessed me to do. Mm -hmm. And I end up in Jackson, Tennessee, sleeping on somebody's couch because we out there selling CDs, hand doing what I call. Come on, boy. Hand, you know, see, what I mean? what? that's that's the part I don't understand because you guys, you OGs, y'all made the sacrifice, but yet these up and coming artists now. I guess they they don't know or they don't want to know the struggle. You know what I'm saying? Because you talk a little bit about that about the struggles when you was coming through. Were you were you oh, accepted? Yeah, well, 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 first, first of all, the struggles when I come through. I remember there used to be a guy by the name of Uncle Bobo, Senator Jones. He's the man who was influential in taking Sir Charles from being Charles Jones to being Sir Charles Jones. Okay, he's the producer. He's the man that owned the record company. That is, there anybody lonely was originally made on. He took Charles down to a farm, and you know he taught him. Charles had the talent, but he helped nurture him. He's OG. Yeah. Senator Jones was an OG and a major player out here, man. I mean, when I did a whole new all remix, he called me up. And I'm like, hello, is this the one they call Big Rob? I say, yes, sir. He said, man, this hole in the wall record. I say, yes, sir. He said, man, you done went and effed up a perfectly good record. Ah! Putting all them, whatever that zap stuff, whatever you doing. What this ain't that ain't the blues. Uh -huh. Right. And I'm like, well, damn. <laughs> Okay, he said. I, I'm like, I'm like. Uh, first, of all, I'm like, who is this? Call me up. Who are you, sir? Who is you that got the nuts to call me up and tell me my record ain't shit? Uh, who are you? This is Uncle Bobo, Jackson, Mississippi. Da, 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 da. Hmm. I'm like, okay, sir. I said, well, I'm sorry you don't like. It. He said, you know, but I tell you this, young brother, you keep going, you'll find your niche. Now, about three years later, I came out with another song. Mm -hmm. Phone rang. Nephew, this is Uncle Bobo. I'm like, oh, uh oh, I done done what well, I done messed up now, Uncle Bobo. <laughs> you ain't messed up nothing. You done finally got it right. You done found mm. the combination where you take that electronic thing you do and you mix it with the blues and the shit sound good, son. Keep doing it. Mm -hmm. So when I meet some of the young cats, you know, like I mean, you know, I know that my generations of the TK Souls, Omar Cunningham, Sir Charles Jones, is Terry yeah. Wright, all those yeah. guys, man. You know what I mean? Man, shit, we got, I mean, you know, yeah, we put some calls, OB, we put some, we put some work in out here and we continue to put the work in. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, yeah, you got to stand in front of the Waffle House at three o'clock in the morning. I walk in there and look like this with that outfit on. Everybody say, man, who is that? I'm like, how y'all doing? My name Big Rob. I got this new song out. It's called I'm Ready to Party. Would you buy one, please? I'm going yeah. table to table. Some of the young thugs, they look at me like, oh, look at that old thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One to so I buy one. That's how yeah. it's done out here, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know that 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 that's that's how it's done. So and, and, mm -hmm. and the real cats, they they know what it is. When I see Jeter and them out putting their work in, hey man, King South goes King South goes live every day from another location out there peddling his wares and making people know about who he is. You dig yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you mm -hmm. know, that, I mean that that that's how that's how it gets down. But yeah, it's definitely mm -hmm. a struggle, man, because we yeah. right now we're in a state where all the artists 
are in the, uh, most of them, 90% of them are independent. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. They ain't got no record company support. They ain't got no, you know, they, you know, you got to sell a CD, reinvest that money in yourself. You did. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, so you came on a scene in 1999. In into, into, in, into, into the soul blues world. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so, I mean, I was already in the R&B world. Yeah. And all yeah. That. But yeah. So yeah, let me ask you this question. Now, now you know, I always ask y'all OGs because I asked, I had Slack on here. You know, Slack got a lot of history. Ob, I've been, I've been. First of all, let me say this: I've been knowing Slack yeah. for forty years. Me and Slack, yeah. Slack is in a band called Windstorm. One of their keyboard players, Arsdale Harris, left uh -huh. Windstorm, got on tour bus with Zap and Roger and Shirley Murdoch, and me and him was in Zap together. So I've been knowing Slacks for since yeah. back in the days when we all had Jerry curls and we was all mm -hmm. singing, you know, trying to be like Prince and ready for the world. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> so I always ask you guys, you know, you Ob Slack, okay? When did the term Southern Soul become uh important i mean when, when did southern soul pop up on the scene what year and and who started it do, do you can you can you tell us who actually started Man, you know I, I i was gonna call over to malico and ask him today because you know they have a big debacle kevin between whether yeah. southern soul was started in shreveport or whether okay. it started in jackson mississippi okay and some people say i think the southern soul started when as far as i can go back with it me and you was talking somebody said, said somebody said carl sims yeah, I remember when I got to Malico, they told me a story about a man named Win Wardell Quarzacue. Uh huh. And Mr. Quarzacue was a man from New Orleans, Louisiana, who had a school bus, and he put all these talented people on the school bus, and he went to Malico Records and recorded in six hours like six songs, and two of those songs are classics. One of them is called mm -hmm. Mr. Big Stuff. The other one is called a uh, groove me hey that sugar dumpling let me tell you something right mm -hmm. Letty right every time i've been in the juke joint all my life they've been playing tonight is the night and cleanup woman that came out like this cleanup woman came out when i was a little bitty boy three years old or something mm -hmm. so i think all of it's southern soul johnny taylor yeah. you know johnny taylor zz hill Lil milton you know all those guys they sang southern soul right you know i mean it's all got that groove to it mm -hmm. So I, I think I think it started. I th I want to say I think it just kind of mor morphed into its own groove, uh -huh. kind of like between Stax music and down home music somewhere somewhere around. I want to say the early seventies or the late sixties for me. Oh, okay. Because I'm a okay. you know because I'm a music fan. So oh, yeah. you know I, I I know this Southern Soul did not start when Big Rob showed up or when my generation of guys because there was guys mm -hmm. before us like Kenny Wayne. Like yeah. Jesse Graham, like Wilson Meadows, mm -hmm. you know there was guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. Like, You say, you say, Kenny Wayne is older than you? Uh, he might, he might not be older than me, but he was certainly making blues records before I was. Absolutely, yeah. wow. Yeah, me, me, yeah. Me, 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 you know, Kenny, Kenny Wayne is, is is a legendary voice out here, man. You got Kenny yeah. Wayne, you got, yeah. you got Jesse Graham, you got on the lady side, you got a lady by the name of Lynn White, you got Jay Blackfoot, mm -hmm. right. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and and what I saw happen right before my eyes is that, say you got gentlemen like Johnny Taylor and Tyrone Davis. When they first came out and started making records, they were the ushers and the Chris Browns of their generation. They weren't blues guys. Yeah. Like B.B. King's always been a blues guy. Mm -hmm. Bobby Blue Bland's always been a blues guy. But Johnny Taylor was straight up. Johnny Taylor sold more records in 1976 on Disco Late than anybody did that year. Mm -hmm. Right, that was just a pop record. He's a pop icon and a soul icon. Yeah. But then as they got older, they started migrating. A lot of them started going to Malico Records mm -hmm. in Jackson, Mississippi, and they started putting more of the bluesier production. I think up under some of their stuff. But even with, well, with Johnny Taylor, he always had that down home flavor. So I, you know, what I mean, but Tyrone Davis, mm -hmm. a lot of it, I, I think, as the guys got older, because the way the mm -hmm. business works when you get older. They don't want to. They're not gonna necessarily put an old guy like me on the radio. Yeah, they'll t they'll take a young guy and put him on the radio singing a big Rob song. But they, you know, what I mean, mm -hmm. you get old. So they found they place and they niche more in down home. And then all my fans and all our fans in the South, mm -hmm. I think, are a whole lot more forgiving, and they show us a whole lot of love. Uh -huh. And so they don't really care how old Big Rob is. Like I'm right now trying to figure out. You know, like, man, do I got to keep putting this magic marker on my beard or go and let it turn? <laughs> go, 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 or do like, do like Kev doing, shave it all the way off. You know what I mean? And, and, and I didn't know what I was going to do about it. So last on my last album, I wrote a song called Salt and Pepper, and me and Calvin Richardson got in the video, and we both uh, got our gray. 
and yep. you know what I mean? Oh uh, uh, yeah. But but I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna segue into what you're saying because I got a kind of question that way. Uh, artists that have been established and older artists or whatever. Is it? I'm I'm not seeing them on a lot of tickets. On what tickets? Any tickets, like because is it that they're outpricing themselves or they're not the hot thing or what? What? What do well, you? Well, 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 let me say this, young man. You know, I'm from deep off in the hood, and when I take a shower, I ain't put no lotion on, so they're gonna be. But I was gonna like say it. about them hands, cause them hands look hard than a motherfucker. I ain't lying. Well, 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 that's the, uh, put the, that's, the, that, that, that's the one made that beat on Sugar Chat. And in this one, right that's the one that's lotion on your hands, big Rob. They look kind of crusty, man. Put some lotion on your hands. Hey, lie. Hey, lie. It's, it's, a ble- it's a blessing to be in your presence. Now, let me keep you back focused, young man. Okay. <laughs> what was your question again? Okay. My question was if there are some bigger artists hey, that maybe. Hey, old- I'm from the hood. I ain't going to call for no lotion. Okay, hold on. Let me see. There you go. You better lick them because they look like some alligator knuckles on that. Well, well, now, now, okay, now, live, live. You really don't want to go there with your boy. You know what I mean? I'm with you, though, man. Let me, let me get my question now. Let me get my question. You're looking now. like you got rejected from the WWF. Now, what's <laughs> You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know, you know, I'm you know, fat you know. now. Huh? Hey, look, now. let me get my question oh, oh, you now. You husky Negro. <laughs> 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 Let me get my question now, sir. So, come on, hey, Kev. Kev. Yeah. He might uh-huh. be the worst guy in the world, man. So, I know. Hey, Kev, I know. What, what's that guy's <laughs> name to be on the football team that like to preach on the side? What's his name? Uh, the, uh, what football? Uh, you know, the guy, he keep everybody energized. Ray uh, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis, yeah. Yeah, you over there, look, over there looking like Ray Lewis. Come on, man. Let's go, little Ray Lewis. Hey, okay. okay. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for I have to jump in for I to get you off him. That's why I'm, <laughs> I, man, just I'm, I'm, get, I just want to get. I just want to get my. I, can, I just want. Came here to have fun. Uh, I want to get my question now, Rob. Yeah. Hold, go ahead. Hold your head up straight, son. Talk to a man like a man. Okay, I'm talking to a man. man. Yeah, Rob. Yeah. I know. I noticed that a lot of uh older or uh season 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 artists season artists. Yeah. Don't be on a lot of tickets. Like your boy, you say, uh, Kenny Wayne. I'm not saying that he. I just that what I see. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think that the crowd or the promoters are looking for the next hot thing, or they don't want to bring the the older and and the more established artists on? What What do you think about that? Well, let me let me say this because I know Kenny and I have a lot of respect for Kenny. I know in the last four or five years. Kenny had to deal with real life. So Kenny had to pull back a little bit out of his music and deal with some personal issues that he had dealing, yeah. de- dealing with his family. So, you know I mean? So it, which is the right thing to do. You know I mean? I know, you know, he lost his dad. And so, you know, he's, you know, he doing, doing real grown man stuff. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not yeah. just picking, I'm not, I'm not picking on Kenny Wayne. It's just the fact, listen, I'm, I'm going to establish this. I'm not picking on Kenny Wayne. I'm just saying that I know there's a lot of uh, artists they're before me and they're, and they done got that status. They got hits and they got everything going, but I don't see them on a lot of tickets. Okay. Well, let me see. Let, let me, I want to, I want to answer the question in which, which I can be a blessing to you. Cause if I give you my real answer, I would probably offend you. Go, no, no offend me. Well, offend okay. me. I want the real no, answer. No. So, 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 so here's the real answer. If a, from I, what I think is that, this is the music business. And my opinion about the music business is it's a young man's game. You got me? It's, it's okay. I, I believe the young the, the, the music business has been set up to be a young man's game. That's number one. But in the soul blues music business that we're in, there's room for all of us. Right. right? There, there's, there's room for all of us. Now, here's the question. Some of the tickets that you're talking about that the promoters are throwing, if they have un- seasoned artists or they got younger just up and coming artists who say don't have the same legacy as some of the older guys right are they selling the same amount of tickets as the promoter who puts the seasoned guys on there that's a good question that's a good that's a good question that's yeah. what that's what i'm trying to get to because, you, know what, you know what i think i think i think a lot of a lot of the seasoned guys they don't jump on a lot of shows 
because you know they don't have to they already established they can say no i don't want to be on that show no i'll wait for the next versus somebody on the show every weekend you know going somewhere overexposing themselves over over saturating the market right i think, right. I think and, that's, and, that's what i see yeah, with the I mean, older and, guys and, and, live, yeah. I, and, and i know exactly it's like i see a lot of flyers and sometimes yeah. and sometimes i'm gonna give it to y'all we're real because i'm a real dude i've sit at home yeah. and sit and see the flyers go down people's timeline and right I'm like damn like did they forget about me or you know or right. what's going on like you know what i mean yeah. like i see this person doing that and that person doing this and this person doing that. right thing. but then when mm -hmm. i start doing my research and checking a lot of it out i found out that sometimes um those shows are not necessarily so accessible so successful because to have a show what i found out and what the old guys older guys taught me is that you got to have somebody that people want to see and with this soul blues music with this soul blues music let's just keep it let's let's not bullshit ourselves about this yes yeah. yeah. really well, so, 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 so let me let me just yeah. say this most of us who got careers out here in the soul blues music world came from DJs in certain cities and not necessarily on the biggest radio station in the city. Might have been a guy like my main man, A.L. Fleming. He's in East Texas. For many years, he ran East Texas. He's a record breaker. You know, we call him yeah. Big Baby. He has a radio station now called 972 The Mix. What's an app? You know what I mean? And you can go and you can, you know, carry it with you everywhere you want to. And those guys, they able to play our records. Most radio stations in most major cities that play soul blues music, they only play it on Saturday mornings. So that means even if they play in a Big Rob record or Mr. Live record, you only gonna get one spin a week. Whereas they play Charlie Wilson records all week long. You follow all me? Week long. So the bad side about that is, is it takes a lot longer for us to get exposure. Like you might've noticed that no matter who it is, a record can be out for a year and a half or two years. And it take that long for that record just to blow up sometime. You right. know, now there are some records that just come out and today instantly they come out and they tomorrow they hits but for the most time most most soul blues records because it takes a little while for it to circulate because we don't have the same marketing dollars and we don't have the same opportunities that artists on the bigger labels have now what how, how does that work into going to the shows well there's a lot of guys such as yourself if you hear big rob is coming to town and you got a new record it's back to the same concept that i told you about me being at the waffle house i'm looking for a crowd show, show me a crowd of black people who like what i do and I go do it for free because mm -hmm. I believe in myself enough that if they see me walking here with this orange hat on and this this stuff right here, okay, even if I didn't pay for it on a bad credit card, I'm going to the Waffle House, I'm going to get that You money. know what, Big Rob? You know what? <laughs> well, you subbed them. Mm -hmm. a, a bad credit card, for real. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, 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 it is what it is. I mean, because, you know, in our hood, we got, we you know, we lie to kick it. And, 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 and we have something yeah. called fake it till you make it. So, so we know how to look the part, even when we ain't really that person. We you know, know what? That though part. I want that. I want that hat, Rob. Well, it's okay. They mm -hmm. they they sell them, young man. And when you sell you some records, I sell it to you for nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Rob, I got a question for you, man. I heard uh, I heard you were a, a promoter friendly artist. Is that true? I try my best to be, but as I'm getting older, my energy is running down because I've been doing this for forty years. You dig what I'm uh -huh. saying? So. Yeah. yeah, but but no, I, I try my best to be a promoter friendly artist because the one thing I found out about this music, no matter who you are, no matter who you are, mm -hmm. you're going to be hot. And just like that cake that come out of mama's oven, at some point, if it sit on the counter long enough, it's going to cool off. And this business is really built upon relationships. Yeah. How many times, Kay, have you had somebody who called you up who was a friend of yours who called and said, hey, man, I know somebody that's trying to do such and such and so and so. It was a guy named Charles Wilson, not Charlie Wilson, but Charles Wilson. He's one of our yeah. legendary soul blues guys too, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I know Charles. I know. I know Charles. I, I remember he called me early in my career. He said, mm -hmm. Rob, I want to give you some advice." And I said, "What's that?" He said, "Don't never." Uh, he said, "Don't never talk bad about another artist to a promoter." Mm -hmm. I said, "Okay." You know, I said, "Okay." Well, that makes sense. But okay, he said, "But no, let me tell you why." He said, "Because." A promoter could be getting ready to hire somebody else okay and that guy that he's getting ready to hire the promoter may ask you your opinion you say something bad about it about that guy the promoter don't hire that man right yeah. he said, but that he said but that man really ripped that man that you talk bad about he was gonna lose everything he got he needed to get that show so he could pay his rent or buy his blood pressure medicine he said you just never know what somebody else is going through 
Mm -hmm. right you, you, you know you just never know what somebody else is going through so the business that i found is just on the farm relationships yeah um you know it's just built upon relationships me and ob talk about this bobby rush told me this he said man make it easy for a guy to put you to work big rod he said as long as you make it easy for them guys to put you to work they gonna put you to work mm -hmm. now the thin line comes in between when a promoter is trying to put you to work and he's straight trying to use you yeah you dig what i'm saying yeah you know but but mm -hmm. but 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 as artists we had to keep it real with ourselves too kevin i can say hey man i want you to i'm coming to the east center i want you to pay me 10 million dollars you say okay big rob that's fine if if, if the 10 million dollars show up i'll be happy to give it to you right <laughs> but yeah then, but then you could turn around and say to me well rob you know you want 10 million but it's only six your name and your picture and your music can only draw six people uh, so mm -hmm. can i have a rebate right mm -hmm. yeah you know what i mean so so but but i think that we just trying to work together that's what i mm -hmm. talk me and kev was talking you know privately about this like, hey man you know the biggest thing just trying to inspire all the brothers to work together because we all yeah. need each other out here man you know what i'm saying that's like true. you know you know you're a young brother you got the energy but i got some knowledge that you don't have right, you know yeah, right. but in but in five years you could have some knowledge i learned so much from watching tucker tucker and them came along be after my generation but they were able to excel man they was able to put that work in and they mm -hmm. were able to get promoted to do things to them that established artists such as myself wouldn't necessarily be able to get them to do. Right. Yeah. Like, well, how y'all get them dudes to do that? They was like, well, you know, the same way that Dr. J and Moses Malone and all them guys did stuff, right? Uh -huh. And now you get a LeBron James who come along. Man, it's the amount of money they pay LeBron James in one year, you know, them guys never made their whole lifetime, right? Yeah, so exactly. That's why, we, that's why we need each other. I need live. I need him to do yes. what he do. I, I need yeah. to be able to share some knowledge with him. You know what I mean? It ain't like mm -hmm. I think I'm a know-it-all. It's just like, yeah. when, you know what I mean? But I might know a whole lot because I've been doing, you do certain Big things. Rob. Like day, you know? Yeah. Rob, yeah. I got, I got, I, I, uh, I got a little bird in my ear say, say, you say I'm the luckiest man in Southern Soul. You are. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, hey, lie, hey, lie, hey, lie. I, I sit back and I watch it. K Young is K Young is 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 a very brilliant man, and you as brilliant as him. Because Mr. Live, let me ask you one question. What's up, brother? How many records you make? I done made I done made some records. I made I some mean, records. I, no man, that's <laughs> like, like, like when the when, the, when, the, when the, look look here, man. When the police pull you over, they ask you what your name is. I, don't my, I think my name is. I done made about I done made I done made about a, I made an EP about I made about six seven records. Yeah. So, so six six or seven songs, right? Right. What's your most successful song? Most successful song. I, I Scoot them gators. Scoot them gators, ain't it? Scoot them gators and uh, city country boot thing is right behind it. Yeah, got you. So, so every week by you doing this performance, you get to be seen doing what every you're doing, week. and really what yeah. you're doing is you're diversifying. You're not just a recording artist. Now you're a talk show host, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So now you are diversifying what you do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. have you sold? I won't put my name in it, but have you sold as many records as TK sold? I have not. Tucker. I ha definitely have not. Ob Buchanan. Yep, I have not. Right, but you but you get seen on the lives with all these different guys. With all the different people, and so yeah. and, and and so 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 that's the beauty of what we're doing out here. We can all network, so my yeah. fans can come to know you. Your fans can come to know me because all ain't none of us got all the fans, right? Yeah. Right. So yeah. I, so I think this is a brilliant way as a platform to you know what I mean to to come and and you be able to sit here and break bread with other brothers, and then you able to get up close and personal and be able to ask questions to the guys like you didn't have to ask somebody who asked somebody who asked somebody you right. have to actually talk to Omar yep. and say hey well man you mm -hmm. know you go so how do you what kind of pens you write your songs with like, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what I'm saying because that's important exactly. information right yeah it's very very important but hey, bro man. let me ask you this question right here I heard you make this statement about uh like DJs uh when you was coming up they was holding trying to hold a ho artist hostage what you mean by that? Do, do they want to like don't play your music or something like that back in the day when you was coming up? Well, when I first started, yeah. Well, let uh -huh. me say this. You know, people, we don't like change. Yeah. We we don't like change. We you know, we well, like, you said, the, same, we like the same thing over yeah. and over. But we always holler about change, but we don't like mm -hmm. change. Mm -mm. So when I came mm -hmm. along and started mixing them, mixing them voice boxes and hand claps and the stuff that the way I was doing it, start singing auto-tune over top of blues records and all that stuff, right? Uh 
a lot of DJs were, there was a whole group of them who was like, come on, man. Yeah, I like that. But then there was some guys, some of the older heads was like, no, no, man, I ain't playing that. We, you know what I mean? We play the 12 bar blues over here and that's what we do. Right? If it don't what? go bum, bum, dun, 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 we ain't doing that. Yeah. Now that, you know, and, and then there are some DJs who may come to you and they, let me break this down to you. The average radio station back in the 70s or the 80s, right? The DJs who we grew up with, say, Kevin, because Glad you're a little bit younger than us. So, yeah. um, not much. We, we, huh? Well, how old are you, Lad? I'm 46. Okay, so yeah, well, then there you go. So yeah. I'm 53. So, so there yeah. you go. So you can remember yeah. this. And yo, yeah. what city are you from, Lad? I'm originally from uh, Mississippi, a little small town, Rolling Fork, Mississippi, man. Okay, got you. Home of so, Muddy Waters. Amen, amen. So so with that, you had, I'm quite sure y'all had DJs around and the DJ was almost yeah, like did. a star, right? We did, yeah. we did. Right? Yes. And, and, then, and then the music business started changing where we started getting more corporations buying the radio stations and right. whatever. So that DJ, and so the personality got taken out the radio. Right. Okay. And then what happened, say, if you had a DJ when we was little kids, that DJ was on the radio six days a week. We all knew him. And if he said, hey, man, meet me at Joe's barbecue spot, exactly. everybody was going to that spot because that's what whoever it was. Like in Shreveport, there was a guy who I love by the name of Cat Daddy. If Cat Daddy mm -hmm. said, go do something, in Detroit is the electrifying mojo. In Cincinnati, it was Sweet Jelly Roll. Just all around the country, there's different places, right? Mm -hmm. So the DJs, their jobs got downsized with the computer. Right. When the job got downsized, down instead of a DJ working for six days a week and being able to get a real paycheck, he could go in and do what they call voice track, and he can do his whole week show in five or six hours. So his boss say, "Man, instead of paying you for forty hours, I'm gonna pay you for eight hours." Well, now that man's household done took a hell of a hit, right? Yeah. Because you know, because with the computer, with the advantage of computers, and so with that, we deal. We that's what's been going on. So the DJ, the DJ, and I'm also a DJ. I started out as a DJ. I'm always be a DJ at heart. I also got mm -hmm. the Big Rob radio show. I'm on right now. I'm on in 10 different cities every Saturday mm -hmm. and Sunday afternoon. Okay? With the Big That's Rob radio deal. show, amongst all the other stuff I do. The DJ need the artist, and the artist needs the DJ. What good is it going to be for me and you live to go make records if we, when we get done with them, who we expect to play them? <laughs> right? Mm hmm now that makes sense. Yeah. Now, 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 if that DJ, uh, if that DJ is a little hungry and you happen to come through his city, what kind of? Why wouldn't you take him out to Waffle House or show him a little love and say thank you? He's helping you feed your family too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one hand washes the other. I, you know, what I mean, that, there you go. I mean, yeah. you know, I come, I come through. I stop at the radio station. I just talked to DJ Quiet Storm, my main man, Sario. Uh, the legendary Bobby OJ. I did an interview with Miss Bev Johnson in, in Memphis, Tennessee. You know, your mm -hmm. DJs are the key because that DJ is that one who can reach over in that stack. All of us got to be honest with ourselves about this. The DJ sitting there with a million records he could play. He could play the Jackson Five, the Temptations, Elvis Presley, uh, Hootie and the Blowfish. He could play Fiend. Mm -hmm. He could play Mr. Serve Home. He ain't got to play Big Rob or Live. Yeah. So why wouldn't we want him to want, we want him to play our music. Because those, mm -hmm. those are the ones who break the records. Yeah, we make them, but we still got to get somebody to play them, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and because they get times, that. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Ron. And I was going to say, and many times in my career, there's been many people who helped, many DJs who helped me. Like, I used to have a bad thing. I was really, really upset with the bootleg man, right? Because nowadays, you know, I mean, you put a record out, and by the time the thing hit the internet, the bootleg man got it. He at the barber shop. I can't get to all that. He done got there and got my money, right? <laughs> I'm like, come on, man, this is insane. But uh -huh. I came to appreciate what it was that he was doing because they helping us promote our music too, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you yep. know, ain't nothing in life free. So you know, mm -hmm. much, much love and respect to all the DJs, but the artists. You know, now there are some DJs who are ridiculous. Like there's some artists who's ridiculous. Like there's some people. And sometimes you go to the damn Waffle House and the people that serve your food is crazy as hell. Yeah, and, yeah. You know what I mean? You know, but you know what, the barber. Hey, hey, look, look, but, but Big hey, Rob, you said he done, he done, he done messed your he done messed your line up before, ain't? <laughs> but you said you said you was a DJ. I think a I lot still, of artists yeah, understand. I still am. I still am. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm saying I don't think a lot of artists understand. Um, you know the the makeup of a radio station on how the radio stations get paid. 
you know, because they get mad at the DJ and say, you ain't playing my music. Could you explain why uh, and how the, how the radio stations make money? Well, the, ra the radio stations make money off of advertisement. Yeah. So, so, so the rate, so, so, so the radio station don't care nothing about the music they play, and they just playing the music. So you'll listen, so they can go to Pepsi Cola and say, "I got a hundred people who might buy your product listening right now because mm -hmm. they playing the record because they play the kind of music you like, right? Because mm -hmm. you got to keep in mind, you know, you have been listening to radio station like the radio station every every hour has sixty seconds, sixty minutes in yeah. it. Uh -huh. And average radio station now all they trying to do is play about thirty six or thirty eight minutes." Were for me if they could get away with playing 20 minutes of commercials they would you have been mm -hmm. listening to one of the radio stations where it's like damn like they didn't play 100 commercials in a row right yeah yeah that's how they get their money mm -hmm. they don't get their money because they play our records they get their money from selling the advertisement mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying wow. so, yeah. so so yeah that, that 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 that's that's how that whole game work and as far mm -hmm. as we all we all want uh we all think we got hot records and uh we all think our record is great we should think oh. that and we all are creative people that's what we are as recording artists mm -hmm. but it's more rec the painful awful truth is it's more records made than it is time to play them yeah oh okay you know I mean? but let me but let me ask you this question too uh coming into southern soul now how was it now you grew up with with uh you know when you you was in the room with johnny taylor male no, no 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 i wasn't i never i never met you, you in the room no, no, okay, no, but, but what, what, what about Denise LaSalle? Were you having a room with Denise LaSalle, Tyrone oh, Davis? Man, one, one, one of the biggest records in my career. I uh, uh she she did my record with me called Blues and Barbecue. We got a wonderful uh, video, got about five million views on it right now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so what was the respect level when when you walked in the room with those guys as opposed to when these artists walk in, in the room with your OGs today? Is it like night and day? Well, let me say this. For me, mm -hmm. not really, because I'm a friendly person. Yeah, and I, you know, what I mean, and I, and you know, I believe that the respect should come up. But I, what I also have found out is that, and I mean no disrespect when I say this, I found yeah. out just a lot of cats don't know. Like you yeah. just asked me that I know Denise LaSalle, but I got a video that's been watched five million times and a record that's been downloaded two hundred thousand times with Denise LaSalle. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. So to ask me, do I know her? Yeah, and that's kind of weird to me, but it ain't weird to me because you just honestly just don't know because the game is yeah. not changing so much and it's new yeah. people coming to it every day. Mm -hmm. So lots of times. So us OGs, we got to kind of take a chill pill because we could be in a room, say, with Mr. Live and three new artists and they see us sitting over there. And because they get introduced into the music, they may not know what we do. Yeah, like it's growing. You know, what I mean, it's like yeah. like, you know, you remember like y'all remember growing up in the hood. And then yeah. new families started coming to the hood, right? Yeah. And so yeah. Like, there was there's a certain point when we was little where we knew everybody on our block. Yeah. And then we started looking around like, well, man, who is these folks, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, <laughs> or you leave and you go home, you go off to the military and you come back. Like, mama, who's them people live across the street now? I don't know them. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Because, the, because that's, the, that's what we've been pushing for, right? We've been trying to make mm -hmm. the thing grow. So as it mm -hmm. grows... I think that sometimes us OGs, we what we take as disrespect is just that some of the young brothers just don't know the work that we put in. And you can't mm -hmm. get mad at somebody not knowing the work yeah. that you put in. Kev, you know, you did over 20 plus years in the military. You yeah. walk in the place. You know what I mean? That's your reality. But you can't expect everybody to know your reality. Yeah. So so that 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 that's that's kind of what I what I see, you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. you know what I mean? I mean, I have encountered a couple of brothers. I'm like, hey man, you know, come on down, you know, stop all that, stop all that ruckus. But for me, most part, most of the young brothers, my nephews, you know what I mean, all the young guys who's coming up behind me, they all have utmost respect. And it touches me. You know, if I'm mm -hmm. sitting at home and Tucker called me, say, Unc, I ain't heard you, I ain't seen you. What's going on? You all right, you got groceries. You know, that means mm -hmm. the world to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jay Wan saying, Uncle, anything I can do for you. I just did a show with Avail Hollywood. You know, he like, hey, man, come on, man. You know what I mean? Just all the, mm -hmm. all of that. So I, yeah. you know, for the, for the most part, I, I, I've i been blessed to have great uh, mm -hmm. experiences. Man, what, what happened to live? It, they, they told him he, they made yeah. him get off. They told him he, he yeah. could have had to come in the house. He can't play with us no more. <laughs> no, he'll pop back on. But let me ask you another question, man. Now, you said you start off as a DJ. Mm -hmm. So was it hard for your transition there yet right there? Was it hard for your transition to being a producer, artist, arranger, a writer, studio engineer, and having your own uh, record label? No, it's, it's, it's all music. It's just out of necessity. When I first started, yeah. 
you know, I couldn't get a record deal. They they wouldn't sign me because I was fat, I'm dark skinned, and they didn't say I sang that good. So mm -hmm. I had to go make my own records. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So I just grabbed it by the hand and, and just, but God, you know, when you're doing what it is that you're born to do, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And you and you know the difference, man. You know what I mean? You you yeah. know the difference. You know what I mean? Like, when you do what it is you're born to do. But no, the, it's, I, it's just music. I love music. So, yeah. you know, I love all kinds of music, man. I listen to George Jones, Travis Tritt, Burt Bacharach, mm -hmm. you know, Mr. Servone, uh, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Migos, uh, The Baby. Mm -hmm. I listen to all of them because I love music. Yeah. But what drew you to what drew you to Midnight Star and Boosie Collins and, and Roger Trapman versus just R&B? Was it just the funk? The funk drew you? Well, they well Midnight Star was R&B at the time. Boosie Collins was a funk legend. Roger Trapman. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, with, with, with Roger, his music touched me. Man, you ever listened to a Zap record? Oh, yeah. Computer Love and all y'all. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, man, I mean, you know, his records are so funky, man. They hit so mm -hmm. hard back in the day. Yeah. You know oh I mean? yeah. So mm -hmm. so with that, it was just that he he it, Rogers' music just came through the speakers different, man. It just it just hit different, you know. It just it you know there was other guys that made records and they were all great records. I'm I'm the, my favorite group of all time is the Jackson Five. Yeah. But Rogers' music. <clears throat> yeah. Blow that thing and all that. I, yeah. I, I wanna oh, blow. Hey, Rob. Yeah. Rob. Yeah. Rob is 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 that Charlie on Computer Love? Absolutely. Yeah. That's Charlie. Yeah. For I, years. I, 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 got, I got a record with Charlie Wilson called uh, Groove On. We want to get my mm -hmm. groove okay. on. It's on one of the big Rob albums we did probably about 10 years ago or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 That, but that, that, I didn't know. I didn't know that was him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and he was, uh, he's, you know, he's a very, very close friend of mine and, and one of my biggest mentors. And he's taught me a lot throughout the years. You know what I mean? But of course, we've all go back three or four decades since I was a little kid. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, but yeah. back then, but back then, did uh did did, did, did Mr. Trauma require y'all to go through any type of professional development class along with etiquette? You know, to have y'all team like stuff like that. Did he have y'all? Did he require y'all to do that? Absolutely. Uh huh. So I, so why why is that missing now? And how well, do you bridge why, that why, gap? How do you bridge the gap now in Southern Soul versus how do you bridge the gap? What you mean? What what part? What what, what which part you mean? The etiquette? I said, or the both of them, you know, the professional development etiquette, you know, because you guys went through that training. So, how do you guys bridge the gap now since you're on Southern Soul? How can we get that over here? You it's, think? It's, you it's, think? It's, 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 it's over here. O -O -O -B, OB put on clothes, don't he? <laughs> Omar, Cunningham, Omar Cunningham dressed, dressed on him. Calvin, it's, it's Calvin not. Richard, it's not. Yeah. got a man by the name of Raphael. Yeah. That, yeah. Like Calvin is outdressing me at this point. He got. He got uh, stylish. Yeah. It's not that the dress. I'm talking about it's the overall attitude toward the music. Don't I mean, forget Mr. Yeah. Live now. Well, yeah, well, Mr. Live. Live. Yeah. We going We gon. We gon. We gon. What side? What you? What you? Let me see. I can. I can look at your neck and see how small your ears is. What you wear? You probably wear about a 36. No, you wear about a 42, don't you? I'm about I'm about 40, 42, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I ain't got nothing left. I, I've had to put a couple of these jackets in the washing machine on real, real hot <laughs> and shrink them down. For you. But, but we we going we gonna get you something. Uh, look, look, look here, man. Yeah. I, I think I, I mean I, I kind of know what the question you asked me, Kevin. Yeah. But my yeah. thing is is that uh the if you go to a TK Soul show, TK Soul is gonna be cleaned up. And yeah. he's gonna be on time. He's gonna be respectful. If you go see Tucker, he's gonna be respectful. He's gonna be on time. If you go see, so you know, I don't know. Pretty much all the guys who I've been rocking with and who I encounter on a weekly basis out here on the road, yeah, they do what it is they supposed to do, and they're consummate professionals. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, what I mean, they 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 they're, they're consummate professionals, man. I mean, I I can't look at any of my brothers out here, and uh, even the wildest guys in the world, like. Pokey Bear is a wild dude, mm. but he's a good kind of wild. Like he tears that oh, yeah. stage up and yeah, he's he gonna good dance guy. and he gonna he gonna poke it, he gonna poke it to death. But he's mm. a, but that but that man is cleaned up. He's gonna be yeah. where he's supposed to be, and he's one of the nicest gentlemen that you ever, yeah, he is. ever he is. you know what I mean? You know, yeah. one of the nicest guys, one of the most soft spoken guys you ever want to meet. So yeah, pretty he much, is. man, you know, I, I I think that we have it here. Yeah, I think that for some of the more up and coming guys. Yeah, I was telling you off this record. I said, "Well, man, some guys might have heard it. it. May be my fault. Somebody heard a big Rob record, and they like shit. That Negro can't sing that good. I can sing. He good. I can mm -hmm. sing as good as him. And the uh -huh. guy, 
the guy who said that he used to be a parking lot attendant or he was a <laughs> bartender, right? Because <laughs> he's hell, he ain't hit, he ain't hitting no notes like Charlie Wilson and Luther Vandross. I can <laughs> oh, not supposed to tell that story a lie. One night I was in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and he okay. take me back to the hotel. Uh, yeah, okay. And he said, "Big Rob, I love you, man." I said, "Well, why you love me so much, right?" Uh -huh. And he said, "Man, cause you can't sing." <laughs> he said, and, and hey, live, and then he said, and I can't sing. Mm. He said, but my old lady liked to hear me sing your songs because me and you sound good singing together. <laughs> Who you saying was again? It, 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 it was a guy, he was just a fan, a fan? Like he was helping us. But he, yeah. but, but what he was trying to say was that Big Rob, I can sing along to your songs. You ain't no Charlie Wilson or you ain't no Luther Vandross. You ain't no mm -hmm. Rance Island, you know. None of us are. Right, you know, you know, I could so I could sing along to your mouth. If my glass is looking kind of empty, fill it up, right? Everybody can do that pretty much, yeah. right? He yeah. was like, so I can sing along with that. And how I mm -hmm. came along, there's a good friend of mine, his name is Microwave. I remember being, we was coming up listening to records, and every time they play like one of them real, real good singers on the radio, mm -hmm. he's like, man. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. He liked the stuff that he could sing along to. And that's what I think is going on in Southern Soul right now is that you get a lot of, you, like, some of the vocalists are not that great. I'm not saying I'm all that. But yeah. it's, the melodies are good, and people yeah. can have fun listening to the music. Right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Now, that, that, now that, that is the beauty of Southern Soul. You don't have to be Luther Vandross. You don't have to be the baddest guitar player, the coldest keyboard player. You can come up with a song, you need that booty whipped, and you put the right mm -hmm. beat with that thing, and everybody be jicking to you in the club. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. And and, 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 I, and I think that's beautiful, because if it wasn't for that, hell, I wouldn't mm -hmm. have no career. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Right. You, got a question? you got a question live, or you want me to keep going? Yeah, I got a question. Okay. What made you, okay, being from Cincinnati, and being up there and like, okay, we can, us Southern folks called the Northern States, what made you fall in love with blues, man? Because what I'm, was cause I you just you just talked about it. you see them knuckles, don't you? I see them knuckles. Do it again. You see them knuckles, oh, right? Well, you know, I can't see it. Got to move on. Woo! <laughs> Look at that. You see that, don't you? Woo! <laughs> hey, man, I'm a, I, I'm a, I'm I'm I, I, I'm proud to be a black man, okay? And yeah. I got hot sauce in my refrigerator, okay? And I do too. I like, and I like catfish, and I like candy yams, and that's not all part of the black experience, but I'm just saying that. And so the blues is a part of my heritage. My daddy listened to the blues. You understand what I'm right. saying? You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, Uncle Wayne, do me a favor. Give me one of them short glasses in there. My daddy, yeah, on, a on. My daddy on a Friday night would sit around the house with his partners, and they would have Lil Junior Parker and B.B. Oh. King and O.V. Wright and all these guys playing, you know what I'm right. saying? And and they would and they would have ladies be coming by and they called them broads, and oh, and, 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 okay, and, and they'd be sipping on a little something. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you exactly what they what they be doing. It, it, they they be doing it just like this right here. Like mm. they have a they have a glass, not a real tall one, but a little bit of glass about about that size. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of drink in it. Okay, and then and and then then they 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 they'd get they'd get them a little something like this, a little brown. Uh, uh -huh. okay? And, and 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 they pour a little bit of something in the glass like that line. Yeah. And and then they do this, they say. <sighs> <laughs> and then and then, then that blues be playing in the background. And they uh -huh. and he say, Oh girl, you show sure is sexy. Right? And then yeah. that lady be the lady be over there, she get to shaking around. Oh, Bobby, yeah. stop that, right? Or whatever it is. So we've come from that experience. So you know what I mean? How mm -hmm. you gonna be? How you gonna be from where we come from and not like the blues? That don't matter if you live in Pasadena, California, yeah. Las Vegas, Nevada. It's part of our heritage, man. Yeah, I, I agree. Feel. I Omar, agree. Omar Cunningham say you need some double D fart on them damn hands, man. <laughs> <laughs> but look, Big Rob, let me ask you in your opinion, man. What what makes the song a hit record? The people. The people. Come on now. Yeah, the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The people. The people, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. You know what I mean. You know, see, see, you know what I mean. Uh, and let me say this, hey, Kev. Yeah, I didn't got in a lot of trouble. So until Omar called me on my phone and said, and he know my phone number. If he called me on my phone, 
and say I need some WD forty, then let me cut my phone off. He called and say that I believe that he said that. Okay, call him old. Call him old. Call him old. Call him old. Okay. But 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 uh but but look here, man. The uh yeah, the hit record. What makes a hit record is what people like. Mm -hmm. What people like, you know. What I mean, what people like. See, I can I, I you know. Every record I've ever wrote, I had to think it was something because there's records I wrote that you never heard. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That I threw, well, I ain't putting this out. This is trash, right? So every yeah. record I wrote, hey man, you know, it's, it's that that's what it is. And uh that's what it is. The people tell you when you got a hit record, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, and and I've been blessed to have quite a few of them. And some of the yeah. ones, some yeah. of the ones that I thought was hits wasn't, and mm -hmm. some of the ones that I didn't think was hits was. Mm -hmm. So right now, because right now, who is the uh, who is the uh, who's the best selling artist in Southern Soul right now? Do, you, do either one of y'all know? Shit, I am. Yeah, why not? You, you know, you I, mean, I, I ain't. I, you know, I mean, why, 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 why not vote for myself? I'm not, yeah. I not. I, I like Snoop saw, say. I want to thank my damn self. No, I'm just. Yeah. 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 See, that's the other thing that happened once after you get a couple of little tastes like this, you just start uh -huh. talking crazy there. Yeah. 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 No, I don't. I mean, yeah, I love yeah. It. yeah. So, because how do you guys track that? Y'all track it from uh, streams. I mean, how do y'all actually track that? Y'all go on YouTube and look, or how do y'all track who's a, who's the best? Because because when I googled it, uh, best top selling artists in Sun So it said Big Rob. Oh, did it? Yeah, when you Google it, it say that. Send me a snap. Send me a snapshot. Of that let me get my lawyers looking at right now. I'm, that, that, yeah. I might be missing a bag or two. Live. Yeah, Should we, that's what they said. Lie. We might. Yeah. We might be on our. We it might said be on Big Rob. Huh? Yeah, if you Google it, Google it right now and said uh the top selling artists in Southern Soul and they had Big Rob on that. Well, pray, well pray, you pray, just probably some shit tonight. <laughs> Google hey, it right man, quick. Hey, Google hey. it. Look, look at your phone. Google it right quick. No, well, no, huh? you know, let, hey. let, 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 let me say this. You know, I don't I I I ain't that vain, you know what I mean? But yeah. I appreciate the honor. But but there's a great chance that that could be a very true statement, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because of the body of work that I put out, but I ain't the only one out here making great music. But exactly, you know, you know, man, I lucked into this song. I got blessed. There's a gentleman by the name of Bernard Thomas, and may he rest in peace. But you all know him as Bishop Bullwinkle. Uh huh. And Bishop Bullwinkle took a song by Big Rob called "Looking for a Country Girl," and he took the music off of that, and he had some words that went hell no to the no no no. And he put that rap down and that thing is going on. We got 82 million people. I just looked at it today because we was in a meeting. We got 60 million people who watched the video just on one instance of the video. So it's up to about 82 million views or more collectively. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was a blessing because I was not in the room with, with the bishop when he made the song. But because he used my music, that made me be a part of the songwriting process. You dig what I'm saying? And that mm -hmm. was a blessing. That was that was a blessing. Uh, I mean, oh, did, a lot of did, he buy, did he buy that track from you all the way out, or you have a percentage of it? No, I own it at this point. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 it's a it's, it's a big long. We had to go to yeah. court and all that stuff, and and then, mm -hmm. you know, what I mean, and, okay. and, and 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 through that, we were friends, and I love him, and I miss him. Yeah, but yeah. you know, what I mean, I but, him. yeah, and 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 that speaks to the testimony of. You know, mm -hmm. Omar is a lawyer and, you know, he went and I'm so proud of him because he's not just a singer. Just, you know, what I mean, he does it. You have to go. You got to handle your business out here, man. And it's that's not easy to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? that That's not easy to do. And so you got to copyright your music and just just a lot of stuff. But but so, yeah, but as far as who's selling the most records, yeah. you know, we don't really have any one concise chart like a billboard chart yeah. that says, you know, this is Southern Soul. You got different places that they they play. Different regions play different artists, different ways, and different DJs play whatever it is they play. Mm -hmm. I'm just thankful to be within the top of some of those guys that are out there. And if it can happen for me, it can happen for anybody. Well, you do you now? You know they call Omar the goat as far as songwriting, but then many people call you the goat when it comes to uh, entertaining. Do you accept that title? I'm I'm just I'm I, I, I'm I'm just gonna stay humble on that because if I say yes, then I sound like an asshole. And, no. and if I don't, no, if, no, I no. don't say, if I don't say, let me say this: I work when you something I've heard you preach about, Mister Young. Uh huh. When a person they've been working all week, they just they hear somebody's having a show this weekend. They come down to have a show. When you spend your forty dollars, your thirty dollars, your ten dollars, your seven dollars, you go they to a club to see somebody do something that you can't do. 
Yeah. And you expect them to do a damn good job at it. When we yeah. go through KFC. Say it again. Right. Say it again, right. Rod. What they, what, they can't do what? Some some folks can't do a good job at it. So I yeah. take it out the music and put it in food. Yeah. In our neighborhoods, everybody, mama, can make cornbread and make coleslaw and fry some fish. But some people are just better at it than others. When we yeah. go through Long John Silver's, it ain't that we can't fry no fish. It ain't, well, we just don't feel like it that day or we don't have time. And we expect it to be good. When people spend their money to come see Big Rob, they expect for him to be good, for him to be, to take, forget about their troubles. And that's something that I learned from Roger Troutman. Yeah. When you come see my show, it's my job to transplant you in whatever mindset you in right now and make mm -hmm. you feel good and forget about your troubles for that hour. Mm -hmm. Got what I'm saying? It's like, you know, yeah. and, and, and that's what I try to do. So, mm -hmm. you know, if I, if I got to wear a onesie, if I got to wear, put on outfits with lights in them, if I got to rip my clothes off and run, stand on the bar, it doesn't matter to me because I'm trying to make you forget that your mortgage is due, that your bill is due, that you got a bad report from the doctor, that your mm -hmm. cousin that was here at the last blues show ain't here now because he died of COVID. That's my yeah. job. That's, mm -hmm. what, that's, that's why you pay that $40 to come see me tonight. Yeah. To make you feel good. The same reason when you go to the movie theater, you pay this, you pay to be entertained, right? Yeah, you have an expectation. That's right. So mm -hmm. that's so that, that that's what I'm trying to do. And because I yeah. come from a long line and just been around some, you know, come from a generation where we grew up with the temptations and the Jackson Fives and the dramatics and yeah. George Clinton, he landing mothership motherships in Karinas and Earth Wind and Fire disappearing and Michael Jackson, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. let's give them a show. And and yeah. I think that so that so I do try to give the best show mm -hmm. and I do try to make the best records. And as far as, you know, who's the best and who's the greatest, I'm going yeah. to I want to acknowledge all the brothers from the guy who just took and borrowed his took his last little stimulus money and got with a beat man. And he couldn't get the beat man. You know how these now they got these songs and they say their name, whoever the beat guy is. Yeah. Oh, from, from the beat. So you, uh -huh. you wouldn't got that beat from him or you leased a beat for $30. Yeah. And cause he wanted $200 for him to give it to you without his name on there. Right. Mm -hmm. What's up live folks. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. So yeah. that guy, he got, he got a great chance and my hat's I'm off good. To, to everybody because they all are trying to, everybody trying to uh -huh. come up and everybody trying to yeah. win out here. Yeah. And that's good. But, but let me spot out some names to you, big Rob. And I want you to tell me what your experience uh, were and is with these names right here. First name, Omar Cunningham. It's my brother. That's your brother. Willie Clayton. Mentor, big brother. Is is he the godfather? As far as I'm concerned, he was doing he was doing it before we were doing it. And in my lifetime, he has pulled all of us from my generation and generation mm -hmm. came behind off to the side mm -hmm. and tried to pull our coattail and tell us something that would make it be better now let me say this about i call him dove c let me say this about dove c okay sometimes just like myself he ain't always politically correct and it ain't easy to take some of his chastisement yeah but he has made my journey better by sharing knowledge with me yeah if that makes sense to you like yeah, a big that brother, makes sense. like an uncle like yeah. you know he you can't bullshit him like you know yeah you know he gonna he gonna he gonna give it to you real but mm -hmm. the stuff that he's saying to you if you get out your feelings and listen to it and try to understand where he's coming from Mm -hmm. you, it, you'll be a better person at the end. Okay. What about Tucker? Much respect. Much respect. Tucker. Much respect. Much respect. I, I, I remember when he first started and everybody mm -hmm. laughed at him. He had his own unique sound. People yeah. was like, oh man, what is that he doing? What is this, that, and the other? And now that sound is the thing that's got everybody shaking and dancing on the dance floor. Hate mm -hmm. it if you want to hate it, but it's just a damn fact. He's a hit making machine. Chicks yeah. think he's sexy. His music, they love his music and, and his fans love him. And I, Man, I look, love him and got much respect for him too. Absolutely. I took I took a picture with Tucker. He was scared to put on his page because I had them guns showing. So he was too embarrassed to put my picture on his page. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Marvin Cease. Marvin Cease. Oh wow, man. Fantastic. Uh mm -hmm. the, the much more than the song Candy Liquor. Much uh -huh. more than that. That's the man mm -hmm. who put Sir Charles Jones in the game. He put so many people in the game, gave lots of people they start. You know, that man rode around in the back of a van on an old makeshift mattress from city to city because he didn't have a tour bus. And he went out and he took shows up to he just couldn't take shows anymore to make sure mm -hmm. that his guys could eat and their families would be fed. True, mm -hmm. true, true, much love and respect and complete hats off to him, bro. Male waiters. My big brother. Mm -hmm. My big brother, the, the, the nicest guy, the one of the nicest guys I've ever met. 
a a true confidant, a true friend, a mm. guy. You ever had a friend who would fight you to make you better? Yep. That's, That's a true way. friend. That, okay. A, 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 a true friend, babe. Yeah. A true one. A real I heard friend. he. I heard he used to give y'all money and everything. He really wanted y'all to be to make it. I, he he give us money. He give us yeah. equipment. Uh, he yeah. give us whatever it is he felt that we needed. And what he would give is he would give of his of himself. Just a great guy. I'm so proud of his mm -hmm. wife and his daughter because they're in San Antonio, Texas, where he come from. Mm -hmm. They were able to get the legislation and get the city to change the name of a street to Mel Waiters Way. Oh wow! And, you know, and I, I mean the real the, 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 the real way. So when you ride down the street, that's what it's saying. That's a good know? deal. You know, uh -huh. and, uh, and 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 I will tell you this story about him. Yeah. I went uh -huh. to San Antonio to work in the studio with him one time, and we had to stop by the clothing store. And he was going mm -hmm. in to buy about six outfits like this. And the first yeah. thing he looked at me, said, no, no, baby, you know, go and pick you something out, too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, huh? I'm like, man, you going to buy me some clothes? He's like, come on, man. Shit, if I'm going to be clean, you going to be clean. If I'm going to eat, you mm -hmm. going to eat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great guy. Great guy. Wow. Sir Charles Jones. My little brother. I love him. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. The king of Southern soul. He is mm -hmm. that dude. Yeah. He is that dude. He, he is that dude that bridged the gap from Johnny Taylor and Tyrone Davis and Little Milton and Bobby Blue Bland and B.B. King while they were still living. He's the one that gave this soul blues music a younger sound, a mm -hmm. younger look. He came in with the sexy look, the pretty boy and all that stuff. He came in with it. He could sing mm -hmm. his ass off. He can produce his ass off. And I'm extremely mm -hmm. proud of him. And I can remember he used to be uh, he used to be a road crew guy and a background singer for Marvin Seats. Wow. So he used to carry the equipment from town to town and set up the mics and mm -hmm. help iron the clothes. So I used to do the same stuff for Roger. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? So he's gone from that, carrying the equipment yeah. to making his own records and being the king of Southern Soul. Yeah, he bad. What about Johnny Taylor? Come on, man. Come on. Yeah. Man. You know I mean? You know, he's, he's I was raised on Johnny Taylor. Taylor. I was raised on Johnny. He, he he he's he's the blueprint. He's the blueprint of it. I mean, you uh -huh. know, he, he's the blueprint of it. I mean, you know, Johnny Taylor got his vocal riffs from Sam Cooke, mm -hmm. right? So you know, they come, they all cut from that same cloth. And Johnny Taylor, come on, man. I mean, he's a, he's the quintessential. There's there's nobody better who ever did the soul blues thing to me than mm -hmm. Mr. Johnny Taylor. Wow, wow. Denise LaSalle, my auntie. I love her. Wow. I miss her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nelly, Nelly Travis. Fantastic. Hard working. Hard yeah. working. Hard, hard hard working lady has transcended the test of time. Mm -hmm. You know, put 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 that put that work in. You know what I mean? Continues to reinvent herself. You know yeah. what I mean? Even 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 at 60 plus, looking like yeah. she's 43, looking better today she did when she mm -hmm. was in her forties, sounding better, putting that work in. She ain't mm -hmm. no punk. She yeah. ain't no punk now. Oh, I know, I know. She what about Shirley Brown? <laughs> oh my goodness, man. Legend. Legend. Yeah. Legendary. Fantastic. I wish I knew. I wish I had a phone number right now. I got mm -hmm. five songs. And yeah. only, only and only problem is if 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 I get there, when I get to a house, Omar probably gonna beat me over there. We're gonna have to box in the parking lot. <laughs> and I'm gonna do the rope of dope on him and you know, I'm gonna Ali him for 14 rounds and take him out in the 15th so I can produce a song uh, on him. She's yeah. a she fantastic lady, fantastic voice, a true leader. Yeah. And my and one of my favorites is Bobby Blue Blaine. Oh man. The last show that Mr. Bland did, I was on it. We was on that Blues is All Right tour. Yeah, fantastic. Come on, man. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Those, those, those guys, those are the those are the people who did it. And I have to add Lil Milton's name to this yeah. because he came to sit right. down yeah. me. I, I, I have to say add. Yeah, Bobby yeah. He was my last one. Lil Milton was like my last one. Bobby uh, and Bobby Rush. The 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 the, the real OG. The the yeah. guy the guy who is still here. Who gonna give you yeah. some knowledge? Who gonna try to tell you? He's a spiritual mm -hmm. man. He's a hell of an entertainer. He's mm -hmm. a, he's been here for forever. He's an icon. Yeah. And you know, not, nothing but love and respect. I ain't got, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. Fantastic. I like OB. I like OB, man. If OB. You hear any no, well, me and OB got the hottest record in Southern Soul right now. It's called Cutting Up. And yeah, my wife liked that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm on that video too. Are you? Hell yeah, I'm in the back. I snuck on there. So did watch. You know what? You you know what, man? You standing back there with my brother. Man, I showed the hell in oh, there. Wait a minute. <laughs> I know you. You the boy ah. down in Houston. Yeah, uh, from Houston. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. You just hiding from the police. That's why you got that crew cutting shit now. But I know you. 
Yeah, yeah, but, I, I, yeah. I know you. I'm, look, in, I, I'm in y'all video in the back with the white shirt I, on. I, 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 abso ab absolutely, man. That that was a fun night, and special shout out to my man, yep. man Six hey. Six Two, because he he shot, he got all the footage, man. Let me tell y'all love. Something. Hey, Kevin. See, yeah. when you know when you talk about Southern Soul, see that's what Southern Soul is to me, man. In, in my video, cutting up, you see, everybody is. Only people that ain't in my video that I, I can come to my mind was Charles and TK because they weren't I wasn't in there either. Right. Well, where was you at? I don't know. You didn't call me. Wait, wait, wait. But then, let me tell y'all. Call, call Pokey. Pokey called us. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me tell y'all about that night. Let me, say, let me say about that night. It was the Pokey. It was the Pokey birthday bash in Natchez, Mississippi. Yeah. Yes. And let me tell y'all something. If you was not there, you missed the celebration because Southern Soul came out that night, y'all. Yeah, I Southern thought. Soul came out hard that night. They came out, they came out that night. Uh, I, I had a lot of people I met, Rob and o, Ob Buchanan. They embraced me that night. Yeah. It was like, man, come drink with us, man. We chilling. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? You oh, you who? They didn't know who I was. But they were like, man, come on. Hey, what you drinking? Okay, I'm drinking this. Man, just drink it. You know, mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a good time, man, just to sit in that lobby and get to know Rob, get to know yes, Yayo, get to know yeah. Buchanan, get to know Tucker. Tucker was sitting in that lobby, too. Absolutely. Uh, Fat Daddy was sitting in that lobby. Yes. That son and soul was in that lobby. You know what? It wasn't no fans. It wasn't no nothing. It wasn't no groupies. It was just family up in there, man. They, that was a good night, y'all. And that's good. That, that's a good deal, man. That's a good deal well, that, right you there. Know, you know, and, 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 and that's the way that it normally is. You know, yeah. like I say, for, for, for most of my scenarios, like I say, when you don't get into the people's posts, but, you know, in my Rolodex, man, you know what I mean? Pretty much, you know, 90% of the guys out here, I know them or we communicate in some kind of way. And, and it's amazing from Lyle's perspective. That's a heck of a thing because what he just said, he ain't lying. You know what I mean? My man, he's getting better now. DJ Ken Ken was there. KJ, they was there. Obi's yeah. wife, she's sitting next to me. You know what I mean? We all we all just broke bread and just as get down. And since I matter of fact, we all had this thing, man, where we started playing old songs. And we mm -hmm. was all in there trying to outdo each other. So OB would play Sideshow by Blue Magic. Exactly. And, 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 and Yayo <laughs> played Switch. And I said, well, yeah. man, I bet you don't remember this one by the World Class Wrecking Crew. And then exactly. Somebody else said, well, man, what about, you know, Joe? They said, we like, no, no, we old school. That ain't old enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good so, vibe. Yeah, but, and, yep. and, and so with that, let me ask you this live. How did us OGs treat you? I mean, did we treat you like we thought we was better than you? Or, you know, no. you wasn't. Not at all. Not at no. all. You you treated me like, okay, I don't know who he is. You should have been pouring a drink. No, no. I ain't pouring no damn drink. But <laughs> anyway, you treated me like, okay, I don't know who he is, but he in this circle, he must be okay. Yes. That's how y'all treated me. He over here with us, he yes. must be okay with somebody. So, so yeah, so so Kev, that's that's yeah. my experience with the Southern yeah. Soul where, wherever it is I go. I've heard yeah. you speak about some of the experiences, you know. What I mean, some of them's yeah. favorable, a lot of them's favorable, some yeah. is not so favorable. Uh -huh. But for but when me and OB, just like the song said, when we get together, man, we cutting up, you know, yeah. I mean? we yeah, all man. and we check on each other as we now get older. Like we me and OB and Tucker and Avail and Wendell B is another one of those legendary guys that's been around yeah. forever. We were all together yeah. in Montgomery, you know, and Man, OB shot itself, right? I'm like, how did you do that? <laughs> and, yeah, Tucker told, told me about that. <laughs> right, and, and one of the most touching things was for me is that I had to go on a little bit earlier than what I planned to go on because uh -huh. it was so many people. It was so many people was, there, man. Yeah, uh, well, I, and I'm talking about about three weeks ago on Mother's Day. Avail Hollywood was on his way, but it was so many people, he couldn't get into the park and get to the stage. Wow. I was right there by the stage. So they was like, hey, man, can you go ahead and go on? I was like, well, you know, I ain't supposed to, but now, yeah, let's do this, okay? And I hopped in the back of the van, and my cousin is sitting next to me, Uncle Wayne, and he will tell you who helped me tie my shoes. OB. OB. Yeah. Wow.
You know, wow. it's a, man, it's, it, it, it's a brotherhood. Uh, like I say, you know, what yeah. I mean? it's, it, it's a it's a brotherhood and it's a familyhood that's out here, yeah. man. You know, me yeah. and Obi and uh, some more of our artists, Margo Thunder, Nathaniel Kimball, who's been out here doing it forever, the Humming Boy, right. Magic One. Yeah. We all going to be in Tunica this Saturday night. And I think me and Calvin Richardson going to be in somewhere, Oakland, Tennessee on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a brotherhood, man. If you ever want to see some of the craziest, wildest stuff in the world. Craziest, wildest you, shit. You, need, you yeah. need to see Sir Charles Jones and Big <laughs> Rob together in the building. And you need to see... <laughs> At two o'clock in the afternoon, when my wife set up all my outfits, and, uh -huh. and I come in there, and I'm like, "Man, who has been messing with my stuff?" And Charles is in the corner with my glasses on, and he got uh -huh. my hat on. Big Rob, Big Rob, I got to wear this tonight. <laughs> and so you know, it's a it's a family, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a family. It's a family, man. And and I gotta recognize somebody, mm -hmm. uh, and give a, and put a name out here. Somebody who we lost, who was a major part of this family. And she's gone, been gone for some time now. Her name was Jackie Neal. Uh -huh. See, we all come up together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And she, had Jackie still been here, there would have been no woman in the game at this point who would have been able to touch her. Mm -hmm. None, because she was the show. She was she was just that. Mm -hmm. she all the, la she all the ladies I know, all the ladies I know talk big about this lady. Pat, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jennifer Watts, a lot of ladies I know in the game today talk big like this lady. Man, you man, know man, 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 Jack, 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 yeah. Jackie Neal was uh, Jackie Neal was that chick, man. You know, what I mean, she if you never heard of her, go listen to some of her music. She was mm -hmm. that, she was she was that bridge. Denise Siles, the queen, Shirley Brown is right there with her, and there's so many phenomenal artists, you know what I mean? But but for this newer generation a soul blues music that we all started about two decades ago. Yeah. You know, Jackie Neal is that lady, baby. She's is that, that Tyree, is that Tyree's mother? That's Tyree's auntie. Auntie. That's Ty yeah. Ty Tyree's auntie. But but Tyree, yeah. and so I've been knowing Tyree. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, my experience is, you know, when I look at the Tyrees and all these people, man, I'm proud of them because I've been seeing them. You know, Avail Hollywood got a sister named Rain. She had a hit record about 2002, 2003 called Zipper. You know, mm -hmm. and it was a heck of a record. Uh, you know, he's a he was a drummer playing with his dad. I mean, right. these root, these roots run deep out here, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. These, these and we've all broke bread together. We've all had to call each other on the Western Union and say, "Hey, man, I'm over here. Can you send me three hundred dollars? I'm broke. Mm -hmm. Down, I'm broken. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, we, yeah. we we've been through this. Like like you know, we all go up yeah. the upside down. I told you, man. There's so many records that Omar Cunningham sings a hook on Big Rob records. Many times, you know what I mean? Many times, you, I got a song called That's My Job. Omar, uh -huh. you know what I mean? I, I go humming in the dictaphone, and I can't have singing. I send it to Omar. He knocked it <laughs> out the park. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there, there's been so many so many fantastic guys and so many fantastic stories. TK Soul. Come on, man. That dude can play all kind of instruments, man, and do all kind of stuff. And, ah, man. Did you, hear about, did, did you hear about Did you hear about? Lacey was going to beat Tucker up down here at, uh, at the Jamboree? No, but Lacey ain't no punk. <laughs> hey, it was it was Omar was in the middle of it. Tucker, Fat Daddy, Jerry Flood, Lacey. <laughs> hey, Tucker, Tucker made the mistake he didn't speak to Lacey. And Lacey's like, I don't know who the hell you think he is. <laughs> oh my God. What? But he was doing something else though. You know, it was just a, just a misunderstanding. But she's gonna jump on Tucker. Well, you know, I mean, you know, hey man, you know, what, let me let me say this about Lacey. Lacey coming up the hard side, up the rough side of the mountain too. Yeah, she was Memphis. She, she, yeah, she was a background singer for all kind of artists, Lil Milk and Jay Blackfoot and all that, man. That's what I'm saying. Like everybody, like it's important for me to say that, hey man, you got to crawl before you walk. Like sometimes yeah. you make this record, every record I made ain't nobody like. I got a new record just came out last week called Evidence. Look like it's gonna do pretty good. I got a mm, big, I saw the video. Yeah, I got I saw a big the video. budget video, right? Yeah. You know, y'all. I saw you eating razor there. blades on there. Damn, you must have really did something for her to feed you some razor blades. Well, well, brother, you know that that that's 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 what I'm saying. You got, you know, you got, you can't be out here hurting these women because these women yeah. want you. So, yeah. But but it's so many of men has been out and put in so much work. Jay Blackfoot, man, you, you know uh -huh. the man that made Taxi. You know Theodis Ely. You yeah. know the Love Doctor. I mean, man, the list goes on and on and on. It's so many fantastic yeah. artists who've done a lot of fantastic stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, and you know what though? Like I tell him, man, you know, I, I, it is a brother and sisterhood, man. You know, and that, that's the whole purpose of my show is to bring people together. 
so, so y'all can have these conversations with one another, you know, so you can, so they can ask Big Rob questions. Look, if you guys on here, hey, look, Tucker, talking about I'm done. <laughs> but look, Tuck, you, you, hey, Tuck, Tucker, you didn't tell me about that, the king of swing, eh? you know what I mean? He, 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 didn't, he didn't tell me almost, but you know. They, yeah, Omar, but, tell you, hey, Omar got it on tape. Omar filmed the whole thing. But that's what it's about, man. When, when, when all y'all come together, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, y'all, man, it's just a big family reunion. Like when I was down at Banks' birthday bash, I saw a lot of artists down there. He had about 20, 25 people yeah. on the show down there. And it was just a big family reunion, man. Everybody was talking to each other. Everybody was watching each other's shows and stuff. And, um, I mean, it, it was just nice. It's just really fun stuff, man, because uh, you learn from those artists, too, at the same time. Because mm -hmm. they sit back and they watching. They, they, they watching your show. So they sit back watching you exactly. and stuff. So you just never know what. No, they don't. They, 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 they don't. They, hey, Kev, they don't watch my show. They be like this on my show. Oh yeah, yeah. They be family, huh? Hey man, why not? Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, I, and, and 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 I appreciate that, and and I and I humbly accept the love because, you know, it's a uh, guys start the younger cats start calling me. They start calling me OG, and they start saying, "Man, you're a legend." I'm looking like, man, no, I ain't no legend. Marvin Cease is a legend. But then I mm -hmm. started seeing, like, I started kind of understand where they was coming from. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. you know, but I, but but I guess you know any guy who can stand on stage, good love to make you cry, grown and sexy, Sugar Shack remix. Please don't judge me. Fill it up. If I get drunk tonight, looking for a country girl. Yeah. Mama song. This with them 808s. Big Rob, you brought the 808s in the game, baby. No, I I didn't. I I didn't. But I, I heard a guy by the name of Rich Casen who did it. Uh -huh. He's the man who made Good Love by Johnny Taylor. Where yeah. you been all of my life? Tell me yeah. where you've been hiding, right? And uh -huh. then when I got my chance to get in there and plug him up, I was like, okay, you know. And then we lost Rich Casen short, you know, shortly a few years ago. So just trying to put in there, but I have tried to put the bass in there and try to get more younger approach than say yeah. what was going on in say a Marvin Cease record or a Bobby mm -hmm. Blue Bland record because. I got a song called Young Folks Love the Blues because I started looking out off the bandstand and I started seeing that it was yeah. more people out there with they, uh, you know, they look like they listen to 3-6 and they look like they listen to, you know, DMX and they listen to uh, the Bone Crush. Bone, bone Crush. All that stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and, 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 and Bone Crush, I think Bone Crush would probably see me ripping my shirt off at the show somewhere. Said, Man, that's good. Right. Rob, I'm, Rob, uh, I watched... I was finna do something. Uh, I was finna bring something to my show, but I watched one of your uh, videos and um, I seen you doing. I said, "Damn, I can't do it now." I bringing the microphone uh, stand top out of the mic. You know what I'm saying? And you know the mic that you have the uh, half of the microphone stand and you singing at the same time. Wayne, would you get my mic? It's right down there. I was about to do that. I was like, I was about to do that, but then I seen. I'm like, yeah, you did. I saw you do that before, man. Saw me. me? Well, yeah. Well, well I didn't well, do well, that. <laughs> I'm just messing I didn't you. do that before. Uh, Rob, that's a Mr. Rob. That's Big Rob thing. I was like, yeah. damn, man, I wanted that, but but mm. you know, I did you get it from Freddie Mercury? From who? Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury is from the. Uh, from Queen, he's the no, first I, one. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm just teasing with you. So this is the big Rob mic stand, right? I got mm -hmm. you. Okay, this, this is, this is the hit that light switch for a second. This, this is the, this is the twenty, this is the twenty twenty one version of it, right? Right. Right. So you know, cause I'm an entertainer, right? Right. Um, you see what I'm saying? So that, yeah. so that, that when they, when, when they, when they, when they come to the big Rob show, that, that, <laughs> that, 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 that that's, that's what his mic do. You know uh huh. What I'm saying? So yeah. what I'm, uh, what I'm so, saying is Freddie Mercury of uh Queen, the uh, rock group Queen, he takes half, he used to take half of the microphone and sing with it. Now oh, yeah, all I, 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 no, I, I'm teasing with you. I know I know exactly what you're talking about. No, that's not where I got it from. What I got it from was just trying to come up with something uniquely. I'm, okay. I'm only, you know, just, just trying to come up with something uniquely. So uh, I designed this right here and, and found somebody who could, who could and make for it you, work from it. Yeah, for you people don't know who Queen is, I'm musically inclined. I know who Queen is, Southern Soul people. Is he, is he a Southern Soul artist? No, he's 
Freddie well, Mercury. Mercury. I know who he is. We ain't talking. We talking about Southern Soul on here. I'm just saying that. I'm just trying to tie in the two. Yeah, I know. No, I well, 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 like, no let, let me say this. No, but I'm always yeah. on a quest to give the best show I can possibly give. Right. And you know, so whatever creative stuff I can come up with. You know what I mean? That, that I'm 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 an artist and I'm an entertainer. You dig what I'm yeah. saying? It's like when yeah. I started to show off with y'all with the, you know, with the dashiki and stuff on. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm just an artist. I'm entertaining, just trying to entertain people, make people feel good. That's mm -hmm. my job. Yeah. Oh yeah. Too, too, what do you think about what, what do you think about Fat Daddy? I think Fat Listen. Daddy is I think Fat Daddy is one of our great up and coming young men. I think that Fat Daddy is got the best of both worlds because his daddy is RL. And yeah. so Fat Daddy, that's in his blood. Like my son, R3 is my son. So he's been going yeah. on the road with me since he was three years old. So it's yeah. stuff that it's stuff that you learn when you've been doing it and been around it all your life. It's stuff that you know that you don't even know you know. So I yeah. think the best is yet to come with Fat Daddy. I think that I think that he's gonna make some fantastic music. Man, there's so many talented yeah. guys. Yeah, he on here. That's, that's why I just mentioned his name. And, and I associate Fat Daddy with the word misanthropic. With with what? Misanthropic. What does that mean? That's a hater. He a hater. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I'm just messing with him. What, 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 why, why do you why do you call him that, Mister Young? I'm just, no, I'm just messing with him because he on here. <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I didn't with. know somebody's in here. Oh, so there's people making comments. Yeah, I can't man, you got that. look. You got Lebrado. You got Omar. You got oh, Lebrado. Hey, man, much respect. Lebrado yeah. came to my house, you, made a record with me called "Sexy." It's on the last Big Rob album. And uh -huh. he's a great guy. Labrado was one of those dudes who helped bring about. He's he he's he's from my generation, man. Labrado yeah. came out the gate, man, with that missing you, babe, and fire. Yeah, he's a bad stuff. boy. Yeah, yeah, man, bad boy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Much, and matter of fact, Labrado, my, you know, I love you, bro. We was on the show together in Utica, Mississippi, and because of COVID, I didn't get a chance to chop it up with him, man. But oh, absolutely, much respect. That's a singing man. Yeah, Hunting, humming boy, Ronnie the Balls, Lady Q. Oh, uh, man. Tawana Murphy, Capono Lopez on here. Uh, I mean, you got a lot of them on here. Uh, let me okay. see who else. Yeah, you got a lot of them. Hey, you, you got you got uh, Miss Miss Maria. Look, Miss Maria here talking about your popcorn. Talk about your popcorn, man. Hey, man, hey, the, 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 the big the big the big rock big rock popcorn. I ain't got none of it sitting back next to me right now, but you can go to the <laughs> website. It's biggrobbsnacks.com. I have a nephew who started a popcorn business, and he came to me, and he said, "Hey, man." What do you think about making your own popcorn? You can choose the flavors and put your picture and stuff on the label. I said, hey, man, let's go get it. You know what I mean? Let's go get it. So so we did that. And, uh, man, it's been extremely successful. I haven't gone hard with it in about the last month because we're getting ready to get up and go back out on the road and go on tour. Uh -huh. And um, we're going to be selling at the shows, praise God. And I got my mm -hmm. new album. Yeah. And that's all I've been doing. Like, right, as soon as I get off this live with y'all, I got to yeah. go to the studio. Like I mm -hmm. said, my first single is called Evidence. I got a new artist. Her name is Margot Thunder. Hands mm -hmm. down, she is the she's a singing machine. Yeah. Five octaves. She's a beast. Then mm -hmm. I got a boy out of uh, Memphis, Tennessee, by the name of Bird Williams. Mm -hmm. And I just put a new record out on him. We're gonna drop his video next week. So I've been being creative during this time, man. And the new Big mm -hmm. Rob album is called Fantastic. It comes out yeah. before the fourth of July. So I mm -hmm. got to go get all these records made because I don't buy beats from people and I ain't yeah. got no beat man. I'm the recording engineer, the songwriter, the musician. Yeah. You know, I got all that. I'm a, I make my records. You dig what I'm yeah. saying? Wow. I don't mean that arrogantly, but, but yeah. you know, I'm old school. It's true. I go to the yeah, studio. Yeah, you ain't arrogant. It's yeah. True. yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, man, I got to get these songs. We got to get mixed and all that. But yeah, the popcorn uh -huh. is awesome, man. Oh, my, oh man. My, my cousin wow. Uncle Wayne is with me. He, he he done went and found some popcorn, so let me show you what. <laughs> hey Rob, yeah, is the girl that's seen five octaves and she's Southern Soul? She she's she's not a girl. She's a grown ass woman, and she'll sign mm. anything up on the table. And she pound mm. for pound is one of the coldest. I, I understand, but is is she Southern Soul or R and B? She's soul. She's yeah, soul. yeah. She, okay, yeah. She, so she, she can sing she, anything. She's she, five, she octave, five octaves in Southern Soul. That's kind of shake. <laughs> what you mean? I mean, you know, singing. She can sing her ass off. She, what, what you? What you? Wait a minute. Hold, hold on now. Yeah. Shelly, Shelly, Shelly Brown can sing five octaves. Denise yeah. Sal in her younger days could sing five octaves. Uh huh. 
You know, I'm just saying. I'm just oh, saying. Wait, hold on, Lacey. I want to see Lacey, you get out of that. Uh, lie, go yeah, and get out of that. Miss Lacey can say. Don't get out of it. I'm just waiting. Go ahead. Now, let, 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 let me say this. Southern soul don't mean broken. It don't mean retarded. It don't yeah. mean we ain't got no talent. Sometimes you got. Sometimes you have artists in Southern Soul. Their talent is stronger yeah. than what the record requires. Uh -huh. Right, right. Like Michael Jackson. Did you ever see Michael Jackson perform live? Did you I've see never him? seen him. I've never seen him perform. But you no. know what? Let me let me say this. Let me say this. People love Mike. I love Mike to death. Mm -hmm. But Mike, Mike wasn't just blowing. Your socks off like a Luca or nothing like that. Now, man, you not 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 that. Mike that, 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 is singing. I, I want to see you get out of that one too, Lai. Go ahead. Mike is singing his ass off, but Mike hey. wasn't no Luca. No, he wasn't, but he's the king hey, of pop. Hey, hey Mike, hey, hey, hey Lai. Yeah, and that's the beauty. And 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 Jay and James Brown is not R. Kelly. They don't need no. to be. All Michael exactly. Jackson had to be was Michael Jackson, and all Luca got to be is Luca. But I will tell you this. That Michael Jackson, hands down, could sing. And if you want me to prove it to you, I can prove it to you right now. I, if you could, want I didn't say Michael could sing. <laughs> don't, put that, don't put that on me. <laughs> yeah, cause, cause, hey man, cause, hey, cause, cause them them Jackson fans, they'll find out where you, they'll find out what barbershop you go to. <laughs> I didn't say hey. Mike could not sing. I said Mike hey. wasn't a better singer than Luther. But let me ask you this question though. So. Who did who was selling our concerts, Michael Jackson or Luther Vandross? Because Michael had a performance element. Yeah, he's king of pop. No, yeah, sir. No, 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 sir. Here, let Don't you. get out of that one, Lai. Here you go. I go, get out of all of them. I'm just waiting on him. Hey, 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 get him, hey, Rob. Hey, go hey, get him. Uh, no, what well, well, first, 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 there's two there's two different things, but we both will have to admit, <laughs> we both will have to admit that there could be no Luther Vandross if there had not been a Michael Joseph Jackson. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. Because 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 you got to admit to you, you got to just keep it all the way one hundred. Michael Jackson sold more records between the ages of nine and twenty years old. Between ABC, I Want You Back, Dancing Machine, Thriller. Thriller no, before Thriller, I'll be there. Yeah. That yeah. Luther Vandross sold in his whole career, and I'm a Luther fan, right? Yeah. But it's two totally different things. Their artistry is different, and that's the beauty of the hood. Like you got one dude that's fat, that's me. You got another dude who might do hundred push-ups, that's Kevin. Right, we got two hundred like you. You know you. You know what I mean. You know you, like you got. You know what I mean. Huh? Bet it, Rob. <laughs> bet it, Rob. Bet it. Two hundred. Bet what? Bet what? I can do two hundred push up. If you do two hundred, I got two in me. Well, well, <laughs> look, 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 look here. Look no, here. Uh, don't don't try to get out of this. Go and get him, Rob. Go ahead. <laughs> look, look, look here. Why why y'all why y'all doing all that pushing up? Get him, okay. Rob. Uh, uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be somewhere trying to get me some green tea and make it to 65, okay? Uh, and uh, you know, and uh, yeah, no, but I was gonna share something with you just so yeah, so that so that you could see what I was talking about because they put this album out that blew my mind on Michael Jackson, right? Mm -hmm. And don't and don't get it twisted. I'm a Luther Vandross fan. Nobody sets it off when you're trying to get with your woman like Luther Vandross. Oh yeah, you Luther, got, yeah. Oh, as soon as Mama hear that doom 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 doom, you know what I mean? They 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 know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. But take a listen to this. If this thing a play, got to be there. Got to be there. That sound like me when I was about five. I'm not saying that <laughs> Michael was not a great vocalist. <laughs> Oh, man, you hey, look, hey, live. Somebody just said, did live forget that Big Rob is the professor of music history? <laughs> man, look, no, wait, I, I mean, mean too. <laughs> okay, well, but, well, brother, hey, live. Let, let let me say this. Uh, can you sing a Michael Jackson song? Hell yeah, I can sing that motherfucker when I'm ready. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying, okay. Here you, go, you know what I mean? You know? <laughs> Last said when he ready. When 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 he, when he ready, huh? Michael Jackson. I'm not trying to 
I, I love Michael Jackson to death. I cried when the nigga died. I'm just saying that, okay, Michael Jackson did not sing better than Luther or a couple more guys. I'm not saying he's not the greatest entertainer in the world. I'm not saying I grew up on Michael. I love him, Rob. I can I'm, I cannot sound or sing like Michael, no. But I can do this. What? Hey, lad. Criticize his hey, ass and tell him. Hey, lad. <laughs> Who handing you all this? Shit? Who the hell is the handle? I want to know who the hell is the hand. Who went sound the goddamn Michael Jackson book? Rob, hey, look. Oh, oh man, somebody would found a book. Who found the damn book? Oh my god, hey, who he found gonna, he the gonna book, get, Rob? Hey, he gonna get some more stuff. Who, is, <laughs> who gonna get shit? Uh, Rob, hey, lie. Don't get nothing hey, else. Lie. Don't, hey, lie. You see Rob, that? stop lie. going get hey, shit. Lie. You see that? Huh? You see that? <laughs> Oh man, Rob, hey, stop lie. going get hey, shit, hey, Rob. Hey, he's the lie. greatest. Hold on, hold on, hold on, he's hold the on, greatest. Hey, hold on, lie, cause, cause, cause oh, I see you know I, I, I see you hard headed, right? Oh man. Okay, Michael Jackson was not the ace. Okay, where, where was he? Here, lie? Let me find that damn <laughs> big joke in this deck right here, lie, cause that part. Of, you know what the big joke is, don't you, lie? Who's the big joker, man? Huh? Who's the big joker, Rob? Michael Jackson, baby. He, he, he okay. He, that, that's him, baby. Now look, <laughs> okay. Now, now, Luke, now, now, now look here. Let me say this. Luther's a bad. Luther's a bad man. When I get ready to go make love with my woman, okay, uh -huh. I'm not gonna go put on. I'll be there. I'm gonna go put on house. Exactly. Then I'm gonna put. Then I'm gonna put on superstar. Okay. And 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 if I can last through that twenty minutes, shit, okay. I'm, then, 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 then I'm, then okay. I'm gonna let, I'm let, let it me, go on the creep, creep, creep. creep. <laughs> okay, let okay. Let me do. Let me say this to what? my viewing audience. <laughs> what? I love Michael Jackson. I he was an inspiration of mine. He's the <laughs> greatest entertainer in the world that I ever seen. He uh, can sing. Now, 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 now you're talking like a black man with some sense. But <laughs> the asterisk that I have, he's not a blower like that. Uh -huh. Just a lot of runs, a lot of do it. You know, it, you know what I'm saying? Mike ain't just blowing like that. So 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 let, let me let me ask you this: Where do you put Charlie Wilson compared to Charlie? Got Michael. <laughs> <laughs> what about the aura? What about R. Kelly? Ain't nobody fucking with R. Kelly. <laughs> I'm from the pull my boots. I'm from the pull my boots album. Ain't nobody fucking with R. Kelly. Hey, but hey, you know hey, 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 live. I call yeah. I call one name because I had this argument with the brother at the barber shop. What R, R. Kelly, uh, and I hope he's well tonight. We got to keep him in prayer and uplift him in prayer, and I hope that he makes it through all the drama that he's been through. Exactly. Right? R. Ke R. Kelly is a phenomenal musician, okay, right. and a phenomenal songwriter, phenomenal producer. Right. But pound, but pound for pound, there's okay. one guy that's living and breathing right. that will send R. Kelly to the house and all of them to the house. Vocally, Talk to me. vocally, production wise, record sale wise, his name. Is Drake Stevie Wonder. Boy, you ain't nobody fucking like him. <laughs> ain't nobody fucking like him. I take I take R. Kelly over Stevie Wonder. Ain't nobody fucking like him. Yeah. Well, R. Well, Kelly, R. Kelly got two. I'm, 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 I'm like uh, boosting on I'm like boosting on Van. Don't get me started now. <laughs> ain't nobody <laughs> fucking with like Kale. Hey, what do y'all think? What, is, what, what, is, what do the like audience that. think? Do y'all would y'all take R. Kelly or Stevie Wonder? Uh, hey, wait a minute. Hold, hold, hold. Hold, 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 hold on, wait a minute. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, cause, cause the man this, wrote this, a oh. chapter about a closet. <laughs> and, Steve, and, Steve, and Stevie Wonder wrote songs in the key of life. <laughs> yeah. One hey, album. Hey, 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 okay, okay. I'm going to put the key of life against 12 play. Oh, all day long. Yeah. Who you I, got? I, I, I can tell you five songs that you Everybody said R. Kelly. Everybody said R. Kelly. It's better than Stevie Wonder. 
Yeah. That okay, so, so here, go. Go. Here, 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 I'm a, let, let me just do this live. Uh, How many records has Stevie Wonder sold? 100 million records. Here's a summary from Wikipedia. Wonder has sold. I don't sold get how many sold. sold. <laughs> <laughs> 22 Grammys. 22 Grammys. Uh -huh. And a hundred yeah. million records. Now hold on. Let, let, let's let's ask about Kells. Okay. Okay. okay, hold on. How many records has R. Kelly sold? Seventy-five million records. According to Wikipedia, Kelly has sold over seventy-five million records worldwide, making him the most successful R and B male artist of the nineteen nineties and one of the world's best selling music artists. So there you go. Okay, okay. Now put Drake. Drake sold more records than both of them. Ain't nobody talking about no Drake, man. We talking about the Kells, man. Plus the culture. Drake's certified unit sold is a remarkable 260 plus million. Good God, I'm right. <laughs> Drake the man. <laughs> wow. So see, I, hey, I, 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 didn't, no. I didn't even know that. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, Drake. Yeah, Drake, I sold all of them. Uh, so, uh, so, so, so we, we all will agree that we love Drake. And, you know, he got he get, he got he got a hell of a barber. And some I don't people. like Drake. Yeah. <laughs> Who bought this shit? Hey, Tucker said it ain't fair because uh Stephen One had a head start. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> Art Kelly wrote Art <laughs> Kelly can just I'm gonna put it like this. Kelly can just put his songs he wrote for other people. What? For other people, he can put the songs he wrote for other people yeah. on that list and okay. still be. And he still has sold more than Drake. Drake sold over 200 million. Because Drake corny. There's a lot of corny people out here. Drake corny. Look, look, I'm a 90s. Hey, he might be corny, but he's sold over 200 million. I'm from the 90s. I'm from the 90s. If you're from the 90s, if you, hey, look, if you're from the 90s, you know the 90s was this. Look, R. Kelly. I think R. Kelly was Stephen Wonder, but, but Drake sold more records. Look here. Drake has a record. Okay. See? Yeah. But look. So, but, so Drake is bigger than R. Kelly. As far as record sales, yeah. Okay. Will he sell out more arenas than Kells? I think he will. Yeah, he will. Yeah, he will. I think he will. Yeah, I think he will. Yeah, he will. You know yeah, why? Because, because all the 90 people are old, and they don't want to go no damn where. It's this new generation. They coming. They, they they might fight and shoot each other and kill each other while they there. Well, I, I but, well I tell y'all what Drake done sold. I'm 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 gonna go make me a soul blues version of Hotline Bling. I promise you that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you might well. Huh? You gonna put, you gonna put Drake on it? Uh, go put Drake on it. <laughs> hey man, if I can get him Drake, come holler at the fat man. You know, I yeah. I, 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 I give you some popcorn. You know what I mean? A little, we got a little check for you. But yeah, but you, <laughs> hey Kevin, you was asking about the popcorn. So we yeah. got, we got I have four flavors. This one's called Good Good. This is uh -huh. spicy butter and cheese. I got uh -huh. one called Grown and Sexy. I named them after Big Rob songs. This is Grown and Sexy. That's cheddar cheese and caramel mix. Then uh -huh. I got one that's called Sugar Shack. That tastes mm. like watermelon and uh apple. Yeah. And what can they get it from? What can they order? Uh B I G G R B B snacks dot com and they're made in a factory. As you can see, they all sealed up. You know what I'm saying? Huh. You know, it's all it's all done the right way. I'm not, I ain't cooking it in my kitchen. You know, yeah, I mean, do that, stuff like man. that. You know, they 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 come and it's all an FDA approved facility, and yeah, it, it's been going through for everybody who gets it, man. People order and order and order. And most people now who first start who fell in love with it now they just trying to be on a diet and not eat so much of it because it, it it is just literally that good, man. You know what I'm how saying? many free how many free samples have you gave away? Oh well, brother, I'm gonna give it to all the way real. Shit, probably about, probably about 500 bags. Cause every time I go to, we throw in some in the audience and we give some. Cause I want people to taste it, and yeah. it's a long term goal, you know, for me. Yeah. Like yeah. I say, you know, to be a, be a blessing. You know, I, I mean, I got several businesses that I do, not just not just the music. That's mm. another thing that I did learn. I learned that first from my parents and my family, and then mm. I learned that from the Troutmans. You know, like like you were asking about our work ethic. So I just tell you what my work ethic was yeah. at 4 45 at 4 45 in the morning, I would wake up and I would walk in the rehearsal hall at five o'clock or say four 30, take me about, I used to actually live across the street from the rehearsal hall. Oh, okay. Where we were, where the group zap rehearsed at. So all I got to do is just get up and walk across the street at six. We would rehearse from five o'clock in the morning till six 45 At six 45, we would put on our construction boots and we would go to the construction site and be there on time. 
Mm -hmm. and we would build houses from seven in the morning to three thirty in the afternoon. Okay. And then at three thirty, most of the guys would go home, but myself, I was Roger's personal assistant. So I would have to leave at lunchtime, go pick him up, take him to the studio. And then when I got off at three thirty, I would have to then go and work in the studio with him, engineering, editing tape, picking up his kids, whatever it was to make mm -hmm. one or two o'clock in the morning. Take him home, get into bed at 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, get back up at in two and a half hours, and my day started all over again. Mm -hmm. So and so, and then we would practice three or four times a week, and then that doesn't matter if we had a show. So we still practice, you know, four, five, three, four times a week, and then still went on the road. And we constantly played. And so mm -hmm. that that's the work ethic, you know what I mean, that I have, you know what I mean? And, and so so we just, you know, that's that's what we do. I mean, no different than you being in the military. I mean, you know. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a it's the mindset. If you want it, you got to get out here and put that work in. And that's yeah. the big that's the big thing I was saying to all the artists that's coming up, man. Yeah. You know, um, are you I'm taking just, on any artists right now? Are you taking on any artists with your label? Man, I say I'm not, but uh -huh. I'm always blessed to find somebody who's extremely talented. Like I say, I got Bird. I'm working with Bird right now, trying to get his project together, getting the Margot Thunder's record together. I got Napoleon Demps, who I owed him a record or two that I promised him. He's been one of the artists I've been working with. My artist, B Soul. My boy, mm -hmm. Big Woo, who's the lead singer of my group, The Problem Solvers. My son, R3. But, mm -hmm. you know, if they if they have real, something that's really, really special, you know, but a lot of artists don't really need me as a producer. What they need me more is just say, hey, man, you can do it. Like live, you can do it because they look up to me. And just hearing me say, hey, man, you can do it. That's what, that's what the OGs did for me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know, you got it all together, but you just need to know somebody that you believe in. Mm -hmm. Tell you like, man, you can get that. That mean all the thing in the world. Omar Cunningham tell one of these guys like, man, you ain't no bad songwriter. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of talented guys. I have my Big Rob radio show. So on my radio show right now, I'm playing new music from Tamara McLean. I'm playing Chris Ivy, Thick and Juicy. I'm playing Fat Daddy. I'm playing P2K and TK Soul. Amongst mm -hmm. all the other records, those are just want something to come to mind. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's a lot of phenomenal artists. I ain't got no mm -hmm. live music, but I'm gonna have to put some in there. Um, mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? And just just so many people, you know what I mean? I played Lady Q, I played Tasha Mack, I played Jeter Jones, you know what I mean? Hell, I play King Fred, I play yeah. Mr. Sam, I play a lot of artists, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But let me ask you a question, Big Rod. Would you get offended if another artist or producer wrote a song for you? No. You wouldn't know. Oh, okay. Because I've heard that. I've heard I've heard some artists get upset when another artist or producer write a song for them. You know, in in you know, that's what I've heard. So I always ask that question. No, you know what I mean? Like, 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 you know, it's very rare. Like I just had actually, I'll be honest, a like, brother who I grew up with uh, uh -huh. just wrote just wrote a song for me. And I, I told him, I said, Man, I'm gonna stop what I'm doing and I'm gonna record this song because you took the time to write a song for me. Mm -hmm. You know, just cause you took the time say, Hey man, I think this right here will work for Rob, you know? And I, you know, as far as collaborations, man, you know, who in Southern soul ain't I made a record with me and Wendell B got a hot record out me and OB Buchanan. Uh, I got record, you know, everybody, man, you know what I mean? Jay Wan, uh, I don't know, Omar, Sir Charles, mm -hmm. uh, man, I, you know, I, I work with a lot of folks. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm open with working with folks and putting their work in. You know, yeah. I, sometimes mm -hmm. I'm just not I'm not that easy to deal with because I am stubborn and I am very, very I would say that about myself. I'm working to be a little bit better every day. And yeah. just learning right. to understand right. other people's points. Yeah, because, you know, you know, what your label is. Some people call you cantankerous and extremely truculent. They call you that. They call me what? Cantankerous and truculent. What is truculent mean? Me? That means you are, are not easy to deal with. Okay, I I I I I I live with me. I understand. Yeah, that. I mean, yeah. come on, man, come on, come and that's on. That's understandable, look. but that's understandable. Come, come. That's the same. That that's they said it about a lot of the a lot of the big artists because you guys don't have time for no nonsense. You know what I'm saying? You guys take y'all this craft serious, and I'm pretty sure you run into people who don't take it serious. You know, so and I understand. You know the the you know the the attitude you might have toward you know this person. So when they say that, I'm like, okay. Then I say, well, who are they talking about? It's okay when you see you got an A-list artist there. Now, do you believe in, let me ask you this question right here. Do you believe that's a hierarchy in Southern Soul? A, B, and C list, or you think everybody's on even kill? It's a hierarchy in life, ain't it? Yeah. If you, I, 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 love, I love going fishing. I love fishing. 
And the biggest thing I found out when I'm out in the woods that reminded me bigger, bigger things eat smaller things. Big, big <laughs> fish eat small fish. That's true. Right. So it's, so, yeah. so, it's, so it's a hierarchy in life. It's a hi yeah. Isn't there a hi hierarchy? Is everybody uh, is everybody uh, Kyrie Irving or LeBron's peer? No, they're not. So, so it's not socially accepted when they say that. They say I hear from the vets that uh, a lot of their younger artists um, don't show the respect or don't believe that there's a hierarchy in Southern Soul, which I know it is because hell, I I, I know who's who in in Southern Soul. Whether they want to believe it or not, you know what I'm saying. There is a hierarchy. There are people that's been here before you. My daddy tell me all the time. My daddy said before. He said you'll never know more than me because I've been here long. Well, it's yeah, not, I mean, you know, let, let, yeah. let me let me say this. You know, yeah, so. Go ahead. So we every community has elders in it if we're blessed yeah. to have that, right? Yeah. And uh -huh. the way that and the way I was taught is you respect your elders. Yeah. And uh and and uh, in other words, you know the people who paved the way for you. Okay. Yeah. Now the people who paved the way that don't get in the right to be a jerk or an asshole just because you've been out here digging longer or you did or you some stuff because you should learn along the way to have a little bit more patience because yeah. now. Uh, now I, I always talk, say guys said, well, man, when we was young in that age, bro, you know, we was probably wild and thinking crazy than some of these dudes was thinking, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know I mean? My sons, mm -hmm. I have two sons and I'm very, very proud of all my kids and my two sons are, my son might pull up with his music blasting out his car. You know what I mean? And the only difference is I pulled up with my car. First of all, the speakers is better now. The bass is bigger, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Mm. But the music may be a little bit different. So he may pull up playing, like I say, you know what I mean? One one of the latest rappers or something, right? Bon or, or he may pull up playing the dramatics because my son yep. likes old school music. Oh, right? okay. And I, and, and how, how old is your boy? How old is he, Rob? Uh, uh, he's one, my youngest son is 30. He's my drummer. All three, everybody okay. didn't know my son. They, yeah, that's the one. Be, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He he's a like bad drum beating entertainment yeah. motor scooter. And, uh -huh. and, and he and he got the battle scars and got his ass whooped and got that beat into him all his life. That's why he taking his shirt off. That he be taking his shirt off and stuff. Huh? Yeah, he take his shirt off. He walk that stage. He can set up the whole stage. He can do whatever yeah. it is that his uh -huh. family needs him to do. Yeah, to bring that show home every night. Yeah, you got mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because yeah. that, that and that's the way it should be. But with that, I you know the younger generation. This is one thing I've been preaching. We just had to have when, when I'm sitting in the barber shop and I see some of the young brothers come in. Mm -hmm. I can't take the attitude like I know everything and they don't know shit. Yeah. Okay. Cause they're cause that'll never work. Yeah. That'll never work. Cause that ain't gonna work. So we yeah. gotta just learn to have a little bit more patience with each other, is my thing. Yeah. If we just all learn to have just a little bit more patience with each other. Like you said, Lady Q is here. Much love, Lady Q. Her husband's on the prayer list. Like, you know, I try to pay attention to stuff. I met her and her husband at the party, at Pokey's birthday party. Wow. You know what I mean? And they were together, and you know what I mean? And just nice even. And I met Lady Q's aunt at Walmart one day. She's like, my niece is such and such. You know what I mean? And so yeah. we just have to, ain't no right or wrong way to make this music, bro. We all yeah. doing the best we can try to do. And mm -hmm. just because I got a record that pop, say, before somebody else's did, that don't give me the right to treat people like a piece of trash. Yeah. You got me? And that's you right. Know what I mean? You know, and, and 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 that's just that's just what that is. And so we mm -hmm. all, I think, should just have more patience. Yeah. Lady Q so, said, thank you. You know, yeah. Much, much, much love and respect to her. You know what I mean? And and they mm -hmm. all out here doing it. I love Dee Dee Simon. I never really met her, but I think she's a phenomenal vocalist. I listen to a mm -hmm. lot of stuff she's done. She's very mm -hmm. bad. She's been doing it for a long, long time. Her music sounds great. It's so many of yeah. people out here. Their music sounds great. Yeah. You know, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm excited about where Southern Soul is at, because I can tell you there was a time period where either there was there was a few records that sound real good and a whole bunch of records that sound but no good yeah now the production levels coming up people's album covers is looking better their music is sounding better their mixes are sounding better their songs is making more sense you know yeah. and and yeah. you know and the new artists are coming and they bringing some heat you know and, and i'm proud of, i'm just proud to be a part of the architecture of the whole yeah. thing mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah you got some you you definitely like i was telling somebody uh this guy here uh you know i brought when I was doing a lot of shows, uh, this one guy, he spoke, well, he, he say he's an R&B singer, but hell, he ain't got no R&B song. So <laughs> you can be, how can you be an R&B singer when you don't have your own song? Yeah, I can be an R&B singer singing an R&B song. But anyway, he was like, uh, I said, man, you come to the show? He said, man, all them Southern Soul people can't sing. I said, well, what, who, who you talking about? I said, man, because you got some Southern Soul singers 
And he can sing because you know he do karaoke in these clubs. I said, boy, you got some karaoke, uh, some Southern Soul singers that'll sing your ass under that table right there. You know, no nah, man, I just ain't seen the ones I seen. I said, well, you ain't seen all of them. You gender, seen all gen, of them. Gender got five octaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Song, yeah. Songbird Jenna, she can she can take it from the floor all the way to the ceiling. What you got to say about that lie? Man, wake up over there. You I, sleep? No, I'm not asleep at all. <laughs> Jenna Harris is a, a phenomenal sim. She she yeah. up the chain, man. For real. Uh, yeah. I'm just yeah. you know, I'm hey, just hey, saying hey. about the five octaves. I'm just saying, is it for Southern Soul? That's all I was saying. I yeah. wasn't well, 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 let, 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 let me let me say this. I, um, I think this as far as Southern Soul. I because I was here before this new thing that's been pushing everybody talking about Southern Soul. Because I even I've had to say, what the hell is Southern? What they talking about? I yeah. make records for folks. I just make I make good music. I call it grown folk music, juke joint music. I don't know nothing about all these names and all these things. It is good or it ain't. Music is yeah. music, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that there's some of the younger artists who are coming up there holding on to it. Like when you hear some of the rap guys, they like, I'm hip hop. I'm hip hop. Well, in my generation, we didn't call it hip hop. We called it rap. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's true. And the, and, and the reason why it gets called hip hop, to be brutally honest, is because the Sugar Hill Gang got a song called Rapper's Delight, and it started yeah. off with a hip hop. Uh -huh. to the hip, to the hip, that's right. Right. Yeah. And then people mm -hmm. start trying to say, well, hip hop, this is what it is. No, man, that shit come from Sugar Hill Gang. That come from, mm -hmm. them, from them lines that one Mike said. Right. Yeah. So, with that yeah. being said, Whatever Southern Soul is to people, or whatever it is, or this new John generation, what we mm. gotta do, man, is yeah. it's just music to me. It's just music. Music is music. Either the music yeah. is good or it's not so good. Or yeah. it's just straight up piece of trash. And it's all in who listens to it. Yeah. Because I can remember playing for my older aunties and uncles. Them coming in the house when Luke, when Luke and them came out with uh, you know, throw that D and all them records yeah. they had, me so horny and all that. Yeah, and the older folks, them big old legs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then older folks was like, "Boy, what?" Is, like me and you talking about yesterday too. Short. Yeah, you know, I'm sitting there bobbing my head like, mm -hmm. that, right? And the old folks yeah. was like, "Ah, oh, no, nah, that ain't the temptation. That wasn't mm -hmm. that you playing, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's what I'm into." So mm -hmm. whatever people want to call it is what they want to call it is good. Whatever it is, man, just try to make the best records you can possibly make and yeah. invest in yourself as much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Live has got his picture back there you know he got he got that back there you know what i mean he, he, you mm -hmm. know so he can that's his backdrop that's he took his time to go take a picture where they properly light his picture and they had to go get it made and he had to get it you know what i mean all that yeah in, yeah yeah mm -hmm. invest, invest in yourself man yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. invest in yourself because mm -hmm. you know that's that's how you're gonna get there yeah you know to want to want murphy say you gave us some great advice hey man i, I love to want murphy to want murphy mm -hmm. Is a, Jenna's on here. Hey, is, Jenna. is, is a phenomenal lady in her own right in lots of ways. She's a radio station owner. She's an announcer. She's a vocalist. She's a mother. She's a mother who has a child who has uh, different gifts than other kids, and she presses yeah. through with that every mm -hmm. day. You got yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, we got we like if all we got to do is give a damn about the person standing next to it. Yeah. That's all we gotta do, bro. You know what I'm saying? I think I think you know what? I think we need to have a uh, Southern Soul Summit. What y'all think about that? Hey man, I've be, I've been, be been on the panel. What 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 welcome to my house? Y'all get it together and let me know what time to buy. I don't need no ribs, I don't need no beef. But well, tell me what, what time the chicken coming off the grill. You don't eat, you don't eat pork? No, man, that ain't no good for the black man. Stop eating that pork, Kevin. Stunt man, I ate a pork, I ate a pork chop sandwich yesterday. Shit. Your what your your wife called and told me that too. That's okay. I show I'm a hey, pork chop sandwich. I I don't, I don't really like real, but a fried pork chop sandwich, man, with some bread and some ketchup, I'm tearing it up. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tearing it up, bro. I'm tearing that right now. Lie, tearing, get I'm your boy, man. A damn hey, pork hey. chop sandwich, shit, I'm tearing it up. But hey, you know what, though, no, man? Hey, hey, hey Kev, yeah. where, where do Lie yeah. work at? He must have one of them jobs. He had to get him to go to real, real early because he rocking back and forth like Ray Charles. I think he ain't going to John. I know. I know he live. You been like you been smoking that light or a light? Man, been smoking a damn thing, but them damn hours trying to clear my damn weekends for these damn shows. Hey, you, 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 what, what is your next you show? Eight what hours. Show, my my next show is Friday with Calvin. Where Down right? here in McGregor. In McGregor, Texas, okay. man. Okay. Yeah, I I I, I want to say this, y'all, before we go. Hold I'm up, gonna, no, hold up. Let me say this. How many hours you work today? Eight hours. 
I work eight hours. So you still you off for sixteen hours, man? And you tired? Come on, bro. I ain't go to bed. Look, yeah, I went to bed, I went to bed at four thirty. I got okay. up at six and I've been up. So okay, who understands the road? <laughs> who understands the road? What if what, you what, been, what what you do, lad? <laughs> what I do? Yeah, I'm a security supervisor for a hospital down here. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why I do. Okay, but you only work eight hours, though. Go ahead. No, I don't. Sometimes I have to work 16. I'm talking about today. How many hours you work today? I work today, but I have to work 16 tomorrow. Uh, so you trying to get your sleep right now for tomorrow? <laughs> no, 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 no. See, a man that don't work don't understand work. Hey, first of all, I work. Man, no, 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 no. No, <laughs> you work into some military shit. A Boy, man look. that don't understand work will not understand work. Okay. okay. I've okay. been at work. Trying to clear my schedule for but the you last. Around. You want to sit down? You want to listen? Listen. For the last, <laughs> for the last three to four months, mm. I've been on the road every weekend. Okay, when I come off that road, it's a five to eight hour drive from where I'm coming from. So I'm you ain't driving. You're not driving. You're not driving. Somebody else driving. So you should be sleeping. I don't give a damn if you riding in that car. <laughs> your ass is tired. Look, look. But what? I'm just saying, I'm what? not making an excuse, and I want to apologize to the audience tonight if I'm seeing if it seems like I'm drowsy or whatever. But I am. Do some pushups, man. Do about twenty pushups and wake up right quick. Okay, I'm good with the pushup, but if y'all don't <laughs> understand work, now we just best work to clear my <laughs> schedule. But I'll be ready Friday, in McGregor. I bet you that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, Somebody. I'm, say, I'm, uh, I'm, how many songs you gonna perform, like? Well, I got a twenty minute. I buy about fifteen and twenty minutes set. Okay, so that's about okay. what four songs? About four, four, four and a half songs. About forty five songs. Yeah. So let well, me let me I, let me ask you let me ask you this before we get up out of here. Uh -huh. What do you guys think about like the? I notice sometimes now with the younger artists they coming up. And when I say younger, I don't necessarily mean like kids. Just artists that yeah. maybe you know they haven't been in the business as long as some of the other ones. Uh -huh. They will take and do a lot of other people's songs like they might start off with the cover yeah, song yeah no. yeah like 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 cover songs cover song cover song cover song no yeah, yeah. okay i want you to hear me i want what? you to hear mr live i may have mm -hmm. one cover song mm -hmm. in my set but i want you to hear what mr live do okay you yeah. know what I'm saying? i don't do a lot of covers mm-hmm Okay. And the cup, the cover, the cover stuff is getting out of hand, y'all. I'm just saying it as an artist. The cover stuff is getting out of hand. You want these promoters to book y'all, but you want to want them to to book a karaoke. Mm. But let me say this. Let me put my promoters hat on. I've had I've had an artist come here, and he might well saying it's a good ship lollipop because people are looking at him crazy as hell. So then when he starts singing cover song. They, they 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 was grooving, you know. He trying to throw his music and his new music, and they like, okay, who is this guy? So mm -hmm. I don't think it's nothing wrong if you if you throw in a cover song. Yeah. You know, let somebody hear your vocals, but but some artists say I, I I'm not singing no cover song, but but they don't know your music. You might well sing Shirley Temple song up there. They show how they show how they be looking at you. But but Cam, what, what, what do you think about that? What do you think about that big Robert? You you you've been in the business well, for years. Well, 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 let, well let, let me say this because you know I have remade songs like on my new album. I just did a remake of uh, uh Love You Down by Ready for the World. One my I have a very, very popular version of Lattimore's Let's Straighten It Out. I have remade uh shit, man, you know what I mean? Um If Loving You is wrong. Yeah, and I understand both sides of it. Sometimes you need those songs to be icebreakers, like you yeah. can be up there because because it because that yeah. feels horrible for as an artist. Right. That yeah. feels horrible to be up there standing up there singing. You putting your heart and soul into this microphone. The people looking at you like you crazy as hell, and it's mainly because they don't know the music that you're yeah. singing. So so you're exactly. not singing your new song, yeah. but they yeah. don't know what that song is. Like I have that nope. problem at the Big Rob show. I have 27 albums. Each album got about 17 songs on it. That's in the mm -hmm. last 21 years. I got more hit records than I understand. Every time I leave the stage, it's always a complaint that I didn't sing this one song and I didn't sing that song. But I'm just trying to go down the list and make sure that I sang the most popular ones. Yeah. Right? So I got to sing mm -hmm. Grown and Sexy. I got to do Good Love and Make You Cry. I got to do Sugar yeah. Shack. I got to yeah. do Fill It Up. I got to do Please Don't Judge Me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? These are songs I got to do. 
And, yeah. and, and so because people have paid their money to hear me, but then there's people out there who die rock, die hard, big rock fans that want to yeah. hear looking for a country girl yeah. or they want to hear good, good, or they want to hear mm -hmm. some of these other songs, which may be album cuts. And yeah. right. I don't want to put them in the show because I want to keep the momentum of the yeah. show up because I'm there yeah. just to entertain the people. Yeah. I don't give a damn if I got to go out there and sing. It don't matter to me if I got to go out there and sing uh, Candyland by Tucker. If that's if it's time to party, that's party. You know what I mean? It doesn't yeah. matter to me. I'm not, I'm, 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 to entertain the people. I'm not putting down, listen to me again. Don't get I'm out of this lie. I'm not putting down the, the <laughs> artists that come out and do cover songs. You can do your cover songs, yeah. but don't do five no, covers. Five of them. Yeah, all five. Yeah. One song that, and then you get out in the audience and say, "Buy my CD or buy my whatever." What I'm buying? Am I buying these cover songs? Or am I buying you? You get That's what I'm saying? Yeah, but no, no, no. That, I mean, well, listen. I, I've had a situation where. Say we've been on the show and the show is running late and they put an artist on who's not as popular. Say right, th th this happens lots of times with me. Say somebody's on the show and they're opening up for me, and the time is running late, right? And I'm like, okay, so you want me to cut my show down by 20 minutes and take three songs out that people are waiting to hear, and then yeah. you put this person on, and this person up here is just singing some colors lollipop right? yeah right exactly. you know what i mean like like and that's not fair but as an artist i also understand when we go to that stage we want to be received and we need the love from the fans and lots of times when you get to places where people don't know you that well the yeah. uh, the icebreaker and the way to do that is by singing you know yeah. you got you got to go out there saying trapped or you got to sing running out of lies or you yeah. got to sing hole in the wall you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying yeah, because right, you know, because that's what the people know you for, and then that goes back to the music that we in. We can't all of us in the Southern Soul movement, and that's all of us. Yeah. We all gotta understand and accept one thing: our movement is getting bigger, but it's not as big as it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So yes, we all, no matter who you are, we all end up in places. Whether you know we go to Los Angeles, some of us go to Seattle, some of us go to places where they don't know none of this stuff. Like, you know, they don't, they don't, and that's why your entertainment value, you got to show up looking good and have a great presentation because many times I've been in a place where they didn't necessarily know my music, but I look so damn crazy and I look so much like an entertainer, they didn't have no choice, but you know, they was, you know, they, they want to know what you're going to do. Yeah. They want to yeah, know what you're going to do. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they had to rock with me. They, they had to respect the fact that I was putting that work in, you know what I mean? And so, right. I mean, you know, you know, a lot of them, I mean, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's an art to this man and nobody knows the right or wrong way to do it. And ain't no one specific yeah. way to do it, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. Did, I, did, I did that this weekend, Rob. I presented, I, uh, the way I came, I seen the expression on the people's face. Like, who the hell is this dude? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I came in my shit. Yeah, that peach suit on? I ain't have a piece. I, I would never wear it again for another two years. But anyway, I I came in my you know, I came dressed. I came looking like somebody. A professional. So yeah. when the, so when the people seem like, who is that? Who is that? So when I started performing and I won them over, a guy walked up to me and said, Man, you got to sing this certain song again. I'll pay you 50 more dollars to sing it again. Mm -hmm. The man gave me fifty dollars to sing "Hard Loving" again. Yeah. Right. Okay. Then after that, I got a, I got two bookings out of that show, and with my USBs that I sell, I got, I, I, I sold about hundred eighty dollars worth of, worth of USBs. So I won that night just Amen. by being. Yeah. Me. Them people didn't know who the hell I was. They just knew whoever that black dude with that white suit on, I want to hear him sing tonight. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? That's good. That's yeah, good. that's good. So look, before we get off here, uh, I'm I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm gonna let Big Rob close it down. I want you to uh, if you if you can tell it because you got a lot of new artists on here right now. If you can give them any advice, any artists and promoter, because you basically done it all. If you can, uh, if, if 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 they came to your house and knocked on your door and said, hey. Uh, Big Rob, could you give me some advice on how can I be successful and what to do and what not to do 
in Southern Soul in, in, in five minutes, what would you tell them? If you had five minutes just to tell them something. Right there, God, God, God first, you know, some mm -hmm. God, God first, you know, that, you know, as long as you got God on your side and you stay within his will, his blessings can overtake you. He'll bless mm -hmm. you even if you're outside of his will, but if when you're inside his will, his blessings can overtake you. Mm -hmm. And just, just just be mindful of that, you know what I mean? Just be mindful of that and study to show yourself approved, man. If you wanted yeah. to be a truck driver, you wouldn't jump up behind the damn wheel of the truck to, to, and, and and start hitting the gas and, and driving down the road and not know how not know what steering wheel was at. Mm -hmm. So this is no different. This is a business, it's an industry. And the more, the more you can learn about it, the more you can learn about it, the better off you're probably going to be in the long run. You know what I'm saying? You know, mm -hmm. and, and and don't get so much in your feelings sometimes. Don't get so much caught up in the way what people say to you. The way they say it sometimes, just enjoy the fact that they are talking to you. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. like we had a description. Who's better, Michael Jackson, R. Kelly, Luther Vandross? You know about Kelly. Right. Well, <laughs> you know, and 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 that and that's fine. And you know what I mean? And so we already know that we already know that the history book says that Michael uh, Joseph Jackson is, uh, is it beats them all hands down and, yeah, that, yeah. And, and 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 then there's another guy who r kelly took a page out of his book who is a hell of a guy by the name of ron isley who made records in the 50s in the 60s yeah. in the 70s in the 80s in the 90s in the 2000s 2000s 10s and still doing it right now yep, still doing it right now yeah right so mm -hmm. you know just just you know just just learn some of your history man just learn some of your history don't get so caught up I know we all, when we in there trying to do what we do, we like, man, I'm going to tear their ass up with this. That's mm -hmm. what we all are saying, right? So that's cool. But then you got to still kind of get some humility about yourself when you come out. It's a tricky situation, Kev. It's like making love to your woman. Like you got to know when to go hard and you got to know when to go soft. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got you to know when to caress and you got to know when to finesse. And you got to know when to... You know, you got, you got, you got to know, you got to know. And, and the only way you can learn those things is by trying. What if you can't get it up? What if you, what if you can't get it up no more? Then what do you do? I, I, I'm not, I'm not qualified uh, to comment on situations <laughs> that happen with old guys like you. Find a woman that'll get it up for you. He, 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 look, look here, man. He, he, even though my beard is gray, it might be some snow on the mountain, but it's still a whole lot of fire down below. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, hey, if, you know, hey, 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 Rob, if it's the right woman, she'll get it up every time. I promise you. <laughs> now, brother, I was just talking about the goodness of God, and here y'all <laughs> Yeah, I'm saying, Mrs., Mrs. Young. Mrs. Young. Maybe you ain't the right damn woman. Do you ever feel about that? <laughs> I ain't got no, I ain't, I ain't got no erectile dysfunction. Fuck that. You just ain't the right motherfucker. Hey, Kev, hey, Kev, he woke now, ain't he? I'm no like a Hey, you ain't the right one. <laughs> Lying stupid, man. Lying stupid. But look, I tell man. the truth. Huh? Yeah, hey, he but did, look, yeah. hey, hey, Big Rob, I, I want to ask you this question, man. And this is the last question I'm going to ask you. No, no, go go ahead. But I got I got I'm gonna stop promoting the new Big yeah. Rob video. It's called Evidence for <laughs> Movie. Please go nope. to YouTube. And oh yeah, watch it. yeah, uh, I checked it out. I, it was I, nice. I had to borrow money from my son, the drummer, to pay these boys yeah. to make this music video for me. Please uh -huh. go watch the video and yeah. tell me what you think about it and see what is going on with them razor blades. Now go ahead. What's your question, kid? Yeah. So so you 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 uh pronounce your name or spell your name B I G G. It was was that after uh Big and Small or you just what? Mr. Young. Yeah, I'm just asking. I've been doing this entertainment thing. <laughs> I know, I'm just messing with you. Since 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 1979. <laughs> no, no, you ain't more. I, I, yeah. I, 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 tell, I, I tell you where I got it from was because uh -huh. I just wanted to be a little bit different. When yeah. I first started, I told you two hours ago about how when I went out there and rocked the knocked the mics down and all uh -huh. that. I used to call myself Rob a mania because it was like the Hulk a mania. I'm gonna be Rob a mania, right? Yeah. What yeah. everywhere and everywhere we would go, that name was too long. So people, they nobody, the people would never get Rob a mania. They just say, "Hey, big guy, big big big, big Rob." Big, big. So yeah. they people kept that was the thing. I was trying to get them to call me Rob a mania, uh -huh. and all they kept calling me was Big Rob. So oh, I okay. decided to just put my own twist on it, spell it B I G G R O B B, and then the there reason why. The reason why I started saying it on the records yeah. was so 
that it would stick with people. So that's why. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, the B-I-G-G-R-B-B, Big Rob. You heard yeah. that on all the records. You got what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, you know, like Mike Jones, record. Mike Jones, Mike Jones. He said it on all his records. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Yeah. Absolutely. So people would yeah. know who they know who they was listening to because yeah. sometimes the sometimes you be in a club listen to a song that you, you like that. the song, yeah. but mm -hmm. you don't know who it is. And when the like I was telling you about how the radio changed up. Yeah. Now you can be listening to records you don't know who it is, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, you don't. That's you true. Don't, you, you don't know who it is. So we, sh you know, I started shouting it out, and it became popular. And uh, yeah. you know, it's just one of those things that kind of stuck, and that's why I started spelling it out, man. But that's uh, good. You know, I'm, I'm just thankful. Now I will say this: you know, we also have the trademark on uh -huh. B I G G R B B. So can't nobody just come along and be Big Rob. And that's a whole nother part of the law purpose, purpose, purpose of learning the music industry. Mm -hmm. Say like Mr. Live, his real name is Tito Jackson, but he calls himself Mr. Live, right? Mr. Live can go out here and work for the next five years and build his name up, you dig? And build yeah. that name up, Mr. Live. And then a guy in San Francisco can go trademark that name. And just yeah. right when Mr. Live pop off and finally get that breakthrough record that they lock, they love him, mm -hmm. he gets served with a cease and desist by somebody who he never met before. And they like, hey, man, you can't perform as Mr. Live. Because I got the trademark on it. Like people was yeah. doing that real, real heavy lead with websites and stuff. Like, you know, you yeah. can say I want kyoung.com mm -hmm. and you find out somebody own it and they tell they bought it for nine dollars, but they'll sell it back to you for a thousand dollars. Yeah. So you wow. so if you so if you using what's called a pseudonym, as in that ain't the name your mama and them gave you, you might want to make sure that you lock that down so can't be nobody else mm -hmm. use come along and use that name. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because you don't yeah. want to work. We One thing we could say about R. Kelly, we could say about Stevie Wonder, we can say about Michael Jackson, is that when you hear their names, you can see, you can close your eyes. When I say R. Kelly, you can picture him in your mind. You can hear yeah. him with no music playing. You dig what I'm saying? And that's all I was trying to do with Big Rob. When they hear about yeah. Big Rob, you're going to see these glad. In your mind, you know mm -hmm. it's going to be. A big dude with some bright colors, whether he got bright color popcorn. You sure got what, some colors. You know, that's what it is. And you, and you too, my brother, when you wake oh, up. Oh, J1, J1 is on here. J1 is on here, man. J1 is on here. J1. One, 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 when you coming on the show for, hey, man. Yeah, when you coming on the show, man. Man. Yeah, it's my first time seeing J1 on here. Yeah. Hey, 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 yeah, you know, Juan and them were probably they probably gonna tease me because uh -huh. I always told I always told them don't oh. do no performances and not get paid. So who do I see? Who gonna hit my cat? Which one of you live or which one y'all gonna hit my cash app? Man, I need twenty seven cent on my cash app. You, you, you didn't perform. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't, hey, you didn't. You didn't, didn't perform. perform. I, I hear the music. You didn't perform, man. You just talk. When listen, when Big Rob talked, that is a performance. Did nobody tell? <laughs> hey, hey, look! Did nobody tell you to come on as that character with the dashiki? <laughs> hey, man, look, hey, hey, yeah. hey, hey, live. Uh, look here, you too, my brother, can get a right? dashiki. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but you know what, though, man, we hey, we need to have a southern soul summit, man. I would love to get about fifty of y'all all together and just have a good time. No music, just to talk, just to talk, and just kind of fellowship, you know, together, man, because. It, it is a movement, you know, like I said, I've been in this thing about four years now, but I've been listening to the music for years. I listened to Sir Charles when I was over in Iraq. I listened to his yeah. music over there, you know, so yeah, man. it's been uh, it's, it's been around for a long time, man. I'm just honored to actually meet you guys. because I've heard your music. I've heard every, all these artists music before. J1, Tucker. I ain't really like Tucker music when I heard it. But since I met him, he okay. Man, <laughs> man I, 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 I've, always, I've, always, I've always liked Tucker's music. No, I said it because he, he on here. He said something about Kenyon Productive. That's why I said it. Boy, you something else. Hey, man. Hey, man. Tucker's, Tucker's a bad man. I keep trying to tell you that. J1, those guys are, those guys, what they taking the music to, what they were able to do, come behind, say, myself and TK and Sir Charles and OB. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. They were able to come in and kind of add a little bit more of what they doing. But they also brought... Yeah help bring the younger audience yeah which we need the younger audience you see what i'm saying yeah yeah you know we we, we need the young audience man and so mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's I, I did a record with juan uh called twitch where i really featured him and my son on three and they both took their shirts off because you know when they mm -hmm. i noticed that when we would be doing shows together they the ladies couldn't get enough of them little young bucks you know what i'm saying yeah 
Yeah. And uh, and Juan has come along and he's man, he has perfected that thing and working out and doing mm -hmm. his thing. You know what I mean? And I'm very, very, very proud of him, man. You know what I mean? Because he let me say this about the Southern Soul artists. Yeah. This is what you got. I want you to understand, Mr. Young uh -huh. and Mr. Live. Understand this one thing. This is probably the last version of music where you can actually get up close and personal with a guy like all jokes aside, Tucker goes in the studio and it ain't nothing coming out the speakers. OK, it's complete silence. And he get out his notepad, and he get on his beat machine and he get his musicians to help him, whatever his process is. But when he get done, you get to work it out. You get a candy land. You get to touch my spot. You get uh, until the morning come. OK, if he might get audio and they do something together. OK, there's a genius in that, man. Yes, yeah, that, that, I agree. That, 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 there's, there's a genius in that. Like, you know, you able you are talking to modern day Stevie Wonders and R. Kelly's. R. Kelly do the same thing. Prince yeah. did the same thing. Roger yeah. Troutman did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Babyface do the same thing. And so yeah. we have to look at these guys as modern day that, you know, Tucker come up with a beat and a swing out sound. He wasn't the first guy who did that. There's Patrick Henry who got those grooves out of Louisiana and lots of different swing out guys that were around doing things. But he put mm -hmm. his own little twist on it. What he was able to do is with his sound and the way he did it resonated with the people. And we got yeah. to respect that. So yeah. if a guy, so if you run into an artist that might be a little bit different, or maybe he ain't, maybe what they say I was, cantankerous or whatever. Yeah, uh -huh, cantankerous. Right? Well, you yeah. know, I, I don't, I don't, you know, what I mean, to go back to respond that. Let me say this: uh, if I am cantankerous, <laughs> that's fine with me because I, because I get results. Yeah, because okay? I, because, 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 because I'm as a, uh, you know, I'm your, I'm your favorite Southern Soul artist, favorite artist. Yeah. So that's that's fine with me, and and I'm mm -hmm. good with that. You mm -hmm. dig what I'm saying? But we got to understand that we're creative people, man. Yeah. We as black people, we are creative right. people, and creative people go always be a little bit different. It's like that's live, right. you know. He up, yeah. the man got to go to work for sixteen hours tomorrow. Then he got to do a show on Friday, right? But because he loves the music and out of respect for what this platform is, he's willing to make that sacrifice. There's Lady Q, and there's all these people out here, man. Do you understand that these people leave their house, they leave their babies with babysitters? Yep. They do all they make all kind of damn sacrifices, man, to be mm -hmm. out here they trying don't even, to they, they, Rob, they ain't don't even be, they don't even begin to know the struggle I've been doing with in this Southern Soul, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. Man, I'm not even gonna even say what I've been doing, but I've been sacrificing. So a so, lot. so 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 there you go. So so my hat's all to it. So let's just be as we as we encounter folks. We got to understand, man, that they all been going through something. They making sacrifices. And those of us who are called to do this music, we love this music. It ain't nothing Tuck can do to stop from waking up at four o'clock in the morning and hearing that beat in his head. Like we don't, we don't do this. This, this shit is not because we just yeah. like doing it. Some mm -hmm. of us can't not do it. Jay one yeah. is a songwriter and a singer. He also he cut hair. He yeah. can drive a truck. He's a father. He's a husband. He can do all that. But he mm -hmm. can't stop being who he is. That's who God called him to be. And mm -hmm. so we just all just got to remember that, man, that because it's a lot. You We are surrounded in this Southern Soul movement. We're surrounded by a lot of talented people. And sometimes we forget the sacrifices that each person is making to try to put this work in out here, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's mm -hmm. why. So when you say it's a hierarchy. Yeah. Yes, there's a hierarchy because there's who sold more records than less records. But but as, human beings, as human beings, I'm not human asleep. Beings, I'm looking at my. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Big Rock. He, I mean, he, 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 he looked at his phone because 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 his number one. She's uh, like, "Ooh, that fat nigga show sound good." And boy, <laughs> that, bro, that big that big boy show. Ba ladies, you are looking at the best looking fat man that you've been. Say it again. Say it again Wait. so they know. Ladies, you are look. They already know you are you. Are, I am him, and he is me. Or you, you are looking at the best looking fat man in show business. My name. <laughs> y'all better, be, hey, y'all better watch y'all now. I thought, I thought Benito and Mo Stovall said it was the best looking teddy bear and in, in fat man in Southern Soul. Hey, I'm gonna be in that say, category wait, wait, in a couple wait, months. Wait, wait, if I keep eating this. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Uh, let, 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 yeah. let me say, let me say this. Mo Stovall yeah. is a singing Mo scooter. Okay, yeah, and that man, that man can sing. Yep. Benito is part of a machine with MC Hammer that sold 50 million records. Uh -huh. Okay, so when you went to the That's show with MC Hammer in the, in the height of Hammer time, 
that was Benito up there hitting them rips. He mm -hmm. was about 40 pounds lighter, but he, he's an industry veteran too. Yeah. Okay. But you are simply looking at the best looking <laughs> fat man in showbiz. Big Rob, you crazy. <laughs> hey, my new my new album is called Fantastic and it's going to sound fantastic. God bless everybody. Please go watch my new video. It's called Evidence the Movie. Please share it on your page. If you're a promoter and you need me to come do shows, mm -hmm. holler at me. I ain't the cheapest because I shouldn't be. And yeah. I ain't the best, but I'm trying to be that. That's that's what I'm talking about. And I appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate you taking two hey, hours. Man, thank, 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 thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Now that we done did two hours, I want to say, Kevin Young, I was watching your thing. I thought uh, you was crazy. I thought you was insane. I was like, boy, when I get on there, I'm going to tell that man this, this, and this, and this. And I'm going to tell him this, this. And I'm going to say, hey, man, why you say this? And, and I said all that, right? And then I uh, sat down and broke bread with you, and I found out that you're a good brother who yeah. has gone to his wife's 401k and went to your retirement program and your plan and invested <laughs> in us artists trying to yeah. put on shows, and you paid artists when you lost money. You had to yeah. go home and lay in the bed with your wife and explain how you just lost money that she told you not to invest in the first place. And you're very, very passionate about yeah. what it is that you do. Mm -hmm. And so I found a whole new family. That's what I'm saying. You can talk to somebody from a distance and you might not know them people. You yeah. think you know them, but you might not mm -hmm. know them, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You might not know them, man. We got artists out here. They got family members that's, you know, that's nine. They got children that's on drugs. They got rent mortgage to pay man they got all kind of stuff going on man so let's just be nicer to yeah each other y'all mm -hmm. yeah i, I, I appreciate that man i love you too brother and look hey, 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 live. what you gonna drink in the morning you gonna drink some coffee man i'm gonna get in i'm gonna take this shower <laughs> and i'm gonna get in this bed i'm giving me some good sleep y'all i'm gonna get about you take a shower first man i, I said shower, shower. Hey, and i told you Hey, what's my mind? You already know. Hey, what? my audience know. Miss Helton, that's all I'm going to say. Anyway. <laughs> all right, man. Well, look. Hey, 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 yeah. hey, hey, make, make, make sure uh. you watch them little bit of ears of yours, too. And, uh, uh, you know what, Rob? You ain't going to even join on you with them crystal <laughs> hands, bro. You look like you've been boxing salt, brother. Hey, 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 you going to come on my, or you going to come on the show. Yeah. With them crusty hands, look like you've been crawling up a wall, dog. Come on, man. Hey, hey, Kim, hey, Kim, hey, Kim, ask him what yeah. this is. And you done ate all the corn. <laughs> Damn, he ain't left no corn. I'm going to rub some of that on there tonight. <laughs> you don't <laughs> have to. Moisturization. Yeah. But listen <laughs> up. Hey, hey, but y'all listen up. Hey, I only got nine episodes left before the, before the grand finale. Everybody just came on my show. We're going we're gonna to run a whole week. I'm going to bring everybody back. So we okay. we just gonna talk Southern Soul, and I tell you, everybody's been on, on on this podcast, and I still got Tucker left. I still got uh, Omar. I still got Fat Dad. I still got a whole bunch of people that's coming on here. So Stacey Adams, yeah, Stacey Adams. So so we do the grand finale. We're gonna run it for a whole week. I'm having like eight eight people on the podcast. We're just gonna talk right. about Southern Soul for that whole week. So I appreciate you guys coming in. I appreciate your time, Big Rob. And uh, like I say, man, uh, I'm not gonna never come to Cincinnati because I ain't got no folks up there, brother. I don't think man, I. Have we, come, 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 on, come on up here. We won't, we won't get you no pork chops, but we'll take you around. We, you, okay. eat, you, eat fish, you eat fish, don't you? Oh yeah, I eat fish. Yeah, I but eat we'll fish. Do you know? Do you know how to fish? Of course, I'm from Arkansas. Okay, well, I, I yeah, I, yeah. I, I love to go fishing, man. That's one of that's one okay. of the things I love going to do. So come on up here. We'll break some bread, and, uh, okay. and we, we, we got you know what I mean. We, we get you a little little soda pop and. Uh, that's a good hey, deal. Hey, live. What is yeah. the name of the new Big Rob record? It's called what? Evidence. I know you say it's fantastic. It's the new album. It's the new album. I well, thought so Evidence I, was. I, I, I like that. He, he, he remembers some of that. So the new song is called Evidence. Please yeah. go watch it. I, I'm going to keep saying yeah. that. Hey, man. Much love to y'all. Much God, God bless everybody. Y'all need me come do a show? They know where to find me at, baby. I, I got you. I got you on speed dial. But look, y'all was born in 1970. Y'all know what this means right here, right? All right, Rob. 